This is 113 on your FM dial at 7.30. Rachel, David, breakfast. Barney, get the kids up for breakfast. Two banks on Wall Street were destroyed by explosions in the early hours of the morning. A new garbage strike looms on the horizon. Wonderful. And street gangs here have claimed the lives of two additional victims. Three Japanese terrorists have hijacked an Italian airliner. And in retaliation, three Italian terrorists have blown up a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Up, please. Up for breakfast. What's the weather look like outside? It's brown today. Is it raining? Something's coming down, but I don't think it's water. What is it? It's a new plague. Isn't it pretty? A little brown rain is normal for New York at this time of year. If it gets a little colder, we can look forward to a tan Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you should go to work today. Ah, uh, a little brown in the air never bothered me yet. I think you should resign from the police force today. I think you should go to Montana and buy a chicken farm today. I don't like chickens. You don't know chickens. You've only seen them frozen with pimples <laughs> and wrapped in plastic. You've never seen them cute and lively with their fur on. Fur? You'll be crazy about Montana. You really hate it, Amaka? Yes. Don't beat around the bush. Are you aware of the fact that somebody tried to break in here last night? How do you know? Because there's a clean spot on the window. <laughs> they must not have wanted to get in very badly. If they really wanted to break in, the bars on that window wouldn't have stopped them. Then what did we put them up for? Don't you remember? I made a promise when we got married. I said I would do everything I could to make you happy. You wanted bars? I gave you bars. I'm very grateful. I love my bars. <laughs> Are you aware that statistics show that there is more crime in the streets than in the home? There's more room in the streets. <laughs> now an item from the world of entertainment. Three people were slain in a theater last night during a first half of intermission robbery attempt. Now once again, your musical interlude. This is 113 on your FM dial on the 101st floor of the Empire State Building. Have a good day. Yeah, yeah, up here where nobody can get to you. <laughs> Special occasion. We're celebrating the printing of Stanley's first business cards. Oh. What do you think? Stanley M. Mankiewicz, attorney at law, public defender's office. Raised letters. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, we're gonna be late. Hurry up, hurry up. Give me a kiss. All right, see ya. Have bye, a good day. Dad. Have a good day. Bye, bye, baby. Bye. Take a crowded bus. <laughs> you all right? I have a something's rotten in Denmark feeling. Would you consider not going to work today and taking me for a drive in the country? As you heard the radio, shootings, bombings. It's my busy season. <laughs> you really love it, don't you? You say shootings and bombings, your eyes light up. Would it make you happier if I didn't like my work? It would make me happy if you liked me better. I don't think you like me better. That is ridiculous. You remember the day you got your gold badge, how excited you were? Do you know what that means to a wife, to know that her husband is more excited about his badge than her body? That's nonsense. I was every bit as excited by your body as my badge. More, probably. Sometimes your sense of humor really annoys me. Goodbye. I have criminals waiting. I'll take you to the country this weekend. No, today, please. Humor me. 
I've humored you. When? That night on the other side of the George Washington Bridge, in the back seat of the Studebaker. You promised you would never throw that up to me. Don't be silly. I throw it up to you every chance I can get. I know. I just thought this was another good opportunity. Liz, I've had a wonderful time, but I really have to go. That's what you said that night in the Studebaker. <laughs> Twelfth Precinct, Detective First Grade Harris. Yes, ma'am, a man peeping on your fire escape? What's the address, ma'am? Uh-huh. Third floor rear bedroom window? What's he look like, ma'am? Tall, 180 pounds, dark hair, nicely dressed, cute smile. Uh, yes, ma'am. Call back if you need us. <laughs> Have a good day. Get inside, Harry. If you can't afford an attorney, the court will provide one at no expense to yourself. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Come on, won't you, Howitz? Give me a break. Sure. What do you want broken? <laughs> Bookmaking, possession of gambling records. Wait a minute. I want an attorney at no cost to myself. What for? You're guilty. You mind if I don't take your word? Yeah, bankroll and betting slips, Harry. You got caught with all this stuff on you. Names, figures, 125, collect Paluzzi, 350, pay Schaefer. You're getting careless, Harry. 65, collect Yamana. 12 precinct, Sergeant Yamana. <laughs> You're getting very careless, Harry. Hey, you guys are making a big mistake. You were sitting on top of the man, beating him with a brick. He's self-defense, man. He hit me first. I was just, you know... Mugging him. Right on. I said, hey, man, give me your money. You know, and the next thing I know, he hits me. That guy, he must be from Malaton or something. You type, I got a headache. I got to go to the can, you know? You're embarrassing, you know that? Sin vergüenza de la tala chubo cocho nauca. Hey, Puerto Rican, your man. I didn't know you Puerto Rican. Because you're so embarrassing. You know what I feel like when I hear somebody screaming, help, police, murder, call the cops, somebody's getting killed. And I find a Puerto Rican beating the hell out of some whitey. I gotta pull out my piece and say, hold on, my hands in the air, police officer, thank you. Because I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Everybody's out there mugging Whitey, even Whitey. You're no Whitey. You're not even black. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Just trying to make a point. <laughs> well, what do you need it for, huh? So you get yourself into trouble, you got no big militant organizations, you got no connections, you got no money, and you can't even run, man. <laughs> don't you have any aspirin? I never use it, don't need it. Maybe you don't eat the right things. <laughs> Clean mind and a healthy body. Uh, hey, anybody want to work vice tomorrow? Uh, me, I'll take it. <laughs> you worked vice last week. I'm a policeman, baby. I goes where I'm needed. <laughs> you taking aspirin again? Yeah. What for? My headache. You know, I know what your trouble is. What? It's your age. What can I do about it? Um, nothing. Then what did you bring it up for? Just making friendly conversation. Come on, Harry, I want to talk to you downtown. Hey, Yamada, ain't there something you can do for me? No, oh, just 20. I'll pay you the rest when you get out. Come on. Hey, he won't let me go to the can. Yeah, uh, Chano, take him to the bathroom. You take him there. Your cuffs. Oh, hey, come on. I'm in bad shape. Me too. I need a fix. I need a vacation. <laughs> just, just a hey, Harris. Last week when you was working vice, were you disguised as a rabbi? 
Yeah, why? Did you have to forcibly subdue a guy in a delicatessen? Yeah. It's for you. It's the Benet brief. <laughs> Now I'm really embarrassed. Try to stop me, I'm gonna get out of here. I kill anybody who tries to stop me. Get, get, get out of my way, I swear I'm gonna kill everybody in this damn place if I don't get out of here. Boy, do I hate to start a day like this. <laughs> But I'm moving very slowly. I said, I want you to misinterpret my moves. I want to get out of here. I don't blame you. I don't want to hurt anybody. Of course you don't want to hurt anybody. But I want to get out of here. Sure you'll get out of here. But not with a gun. Can I get out of here without the gun? <laughs> we'll try to arrange something. <laughs> Let me ask don't you. Don't come up close. Of course up. not. I'm backing up. What, do you think I'm crazy? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. What's your name? That's the question? Yeah. I'm Barney Miller. Don't call me, man! No, 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 no con, no con, no con. It's just that if you call somebody by a name, he becomes a person. It's easy to shoot a stranger, it's hard to shoot a person. What's your name? Santos. Santos. There, yeah, see, we're... We're getting to know each other already. Maybe we can even be friends, huh? What's your first name? Ramon. You call me Barney, I'll call you Ramon. I want to get out of here, Barney. <laughs> sure you get Ramon, but, but you got to go by the rules. Right, first, we got to book you. In jail? That's all we got here. <laughs> but you get a fair and impartial trial. Oh, man. What's the matter? I'm a Puerto Rican junkie in a police station with a gun in my hand. What am I gonna do with a fair child? <laughs> Ramon, this is a police station. <laughs> Gotta let Sergeant Amangual answer the telephone. Believe me, he won't do anything stupid. <laughs> Don't do anything stupid, Sergeant Amangual. <laughs> okay. Fort Precinct Detective, Sergeant Mangual speaking. <laughs> Barney, it's your wife. <laughs> Ask her to call back, will you? Could you call back later, Elizabeth? <laughs> she can't call back, Barney. <laughs> Ramon, are you, are you married? Someday you'll be married, you'll understand. Do you, do you mind if I speak to my wife? No tricks. No tricks. Uh, be brief, will you, Liz? I'm kind of busy. Liz. Li li Liz. Liz, I can't talk chickens now. <laughs> I got people waiting. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember you to all the boys. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, <laughs> dear. Bye-bye. <laughs> Forgive me, Ramon. Hey, I got a great idea. Wonderful. I'll take thinking to shooting any day. <laughs> Everybody pay attention. Ramon has an idea. Okay, man, look. I'll give you back the gun, and then you let me walk out of here, and we can forget the whole thing happened, huh? <laughs> what do you say, huh? <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea. <laughs> I'd like to, Ramon, but I can't. Why not? It's okay with us. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Why not? It's okay with them. Ramon, if I told you that if you gave me the gun, I would let you walk out of here like nothing happened, would you believe me? Maybe. No, you wouldn't. Because you're not stupid. But neither are we. If you give me that gun and try to walk out of here, Sergeant Amangual and the rest of the boys are going to beat the hell out of you. Tell them. <laughs> Tell him what? Tell him if he gives me the gun and tries to walk out of here, you and the rest of the boys are going to beat the hell out of him. Barney! Tell him! <laughs> I want Ramon to know that up here, 
Nobody lies to him. Okay, if you put the gun down and try to walk out of here, me and the boys are gonna beat the hell out of you. <laughs> Now, that you can believe. Now, Ramon, that gun is not going to get you out of here. But I've got something in my pocket that will. What you got? A card. What kind of card? A card with the name of a lawyer on it. I ain't got no dough for a lawyer. Stanley Mankiewicz doesn't charge. Don't put me on, man. Everybody charges this. That's the beauty part of this card. The city pays him. He's a public defender. He's, he's very young, but he's very bright. Keeps company with my daughter. This guy Mankiewicz, he's not a Puerto Rican. He's Jewish. It's practically the same thing. <laughs> now, Ramon. Ramon, you see, my gun is over here and my hands are up here. Now, the card is in this pocket. Here. I don't know, man. Here, here. Put it right there. Cops are going to be coming through that door. It's going to be all over now. Pick up the car. I want me to kill you, man. I want you to call Stanley Mankiewicz. <laughs> Is that too much to ask of a friend? Okay, you won't regret it. Whose gun is this? <laughs> Mine. You and I will discuss it another time. Our Ramon happened to get your gun. Meanwhile, take him downstairs and book him. Let him make his phone call. And give him something for a screaming memes. Hey, the truth, I could use a little something myself. Hey, Barney, why didn't you just drop to the floor? I could have had a clear shot at him. I wouldn't want a thing like that on your conscience, would you, Howitz? Besides, I've seen you on the pistol range. <laughs> well, what's that mean? <laughs> well, with the kid, I stood a 50-50 chance he wouldn't shoot me. With you, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> Hello? Who's there? It's me, I'm home. I'll believe it when I see it. Daddy me. It's not polite to sneak up behind people and bang. David. David, there is two and a half million dollars worth of toys in this house. How come you always play with a gun? Play with a gun? It's part of my job. Mr. Schwartz has a job and he doesn't play with a gun. Mr. Schwartz is a janitor. He plays with a shovel. <laughs> Father's a police officer, he plays with a gun. Here, look. Come on. Play with this. David, your pizza's ready. Hi. Hi. How was your day? We didn't get robbed. Oh, see? See, that's because I washed the rest of the window and they couldn't find their way back. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How was your day? Fine. Really? Yeah. Perfectly normal day. I don't believe you, but I never look a gift husband in the mouth. Hi, Pop. Uh, well, Mom, can I have something to eat right away? I thought you were going out to dinner with Stanley. Our public defenders don't have any money. All we ever eat for dinner is dessert. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll get it. I'll fix something for Stanley, too. That way you can both start out even. <laughs> and how was school today? I didn't get robbed. <laughs> Rachel. Hi. Oh, hello, Stanley. Can I fix a drink? Ah, uh, no, thank you, Captain Miller. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. Hi, Stanley. Actually, uh, I'm here tonight for two reasons. First, to take a certain young, beautiful girl out to dinner. And second, to present a bottle of wine to the hero as a, a tribute and a thank you. Hero? What hero? 
You shouldn't have done it, Stanley. What hero, Stanley? Didn't he tell you? No. Well, this morning, uh, some crazy kid strung out on drugs comes into the police station and takes a gun away from one of the police officers and threatens to kill everyone in the place unless they let him go free. And Captain Barney Miller not only talks him out of it, but refers him to me as a client. Well, isn't that swell, Stanley? How did a thing like that happen? It happens all the time on a perfectly normal day. What is everybody making a big deal big about? Big deal? Dad, you could have been killed. Stanley's over-dramatizing everything. He comes up with this wild story about some crazy kid comes into the police station, steals a policeman's gun, threatens to shoot everybody in the place unless we let him out. Wasn't that what happened? Of course not. Then what happened? Some crazy kid came into the police station, stole a policeman's gun, threatened to shoot everybody in the place unless we let him go. What the hell? A miss is as good as a mile, I always say. I'm sorry, Captain Miller. I didn't mean to upset everybody. It's all right, Stanley. We've been there before. Is there anything I can do? Yes, you came to take my daughter to, to dessert. Take her. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. A perfectly normal day. I didn't want to upset you. You could have broken it to me gently, like. Guess who almost got killed today? A situation like this happens once in a lifetime. You realize what that means? I'm safe for the rest of my lifetime. Sometimes your sense of humor... Yeah, I know. It annoys you. I knew you weren't going to Montana today. I had a feeling you sensed that. I knew you weren't going to buy a chicken farm today. Very observed. I always know when you're hiding something from me. Liz. Liz. I know a guy who wants to sell a Studebaker. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Look, don't jive me, man. You followed me six blocks and offered me a hundred bucks. <laughs> that is, you out of towners that give New York a bad name, man. Right on. And Ramon doesn't deny his guilt, but society is the real criminal here. Society has taken away his choices and therefore taken away his freedom. Excellent speech, Stanley. Excellent speech. Shut up. Yeah, uh, Ramon Santos been released by the court. Check him out. You're kidding. How do you manage that? No one appeared to press the charges. Yeah. But it would have been an excellent speech, Stanley. <laughs> Ramon, under most circumstances, we wouldn't approve, but we're glad to see you get a break. <laughs> Santos, come here and sign out for your valuable. <laughs> what did the judge say about him taking Fish's gun? Fish's gun? Yeah. Sergeant Fish, did someone take your gun away? My gun? Don't be ridiculous. Your mother, do you recall such an incident? Who was this? Well, Jehovitz, was Ramon in here with a gun? Ah, uh, you were in the way. I couldn't get a good look at him. Harris? All Puerto Ricans look alike to me. <laughs> so long, Ramon. See you, Stanley. Hey, Mr. Monkowitz, don't worry about it, man. I bet you get another chance to make that speech. I got lots of friends. <laughs> That's embarrassing, you know that? <laughs> I mean, you are really embarrassing. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Oh, yes.
12th Precinct Detective, Sergeant Amanguala speaking. No, ma'am, I'm sorry, but we can't trace them. You see, there's very little we can do about obscene phone calls. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Would you watch your language, please, ma'am? <laughs> gonna drive me crazy 26 calls in two weeks that's some dirty guy <laughs> we got him down the attempted suicide yeah oh just dropped him off at bellevue oh. psycho ward where's fish he coming the guy wanted to jump off the roof and there's no elevator in the building old fish had to climb nine flights of stairs <laughs> <laughs> Twelve years ago, I put an elevator in this precinct. Five years ago, I said it again. Last year, I even offered to pay for it. How do you feel? I feel fine. It's my legs. I must have been a breach, baby. My feet are older than I am. Listen, if you are going to make obscene phone calls, now, would you make them from one location or from a variety of locations? I'd rather have someone else make them for me. <laughs> You mind, you chase a suspect into a residence. You have no warrant for search and entry, but you know evidence is about to be destroyed inside. Do you hold off, or do you go in and make an arrest and take a chance of violating the suspect's rights? Funny spot by olden times. What? Look, six pounds off, blinkers on, with the finest grass jockey in the country. I better. Then the lady next to me says, hey, there's a gray horse with a girl jockey in blue. My two favorite colors. She wins, I lose. Come on, Mama, I'm trying to pass my test for sergeant now. You gonna help me? Yeah, don't go in. Well, well, well. The same old melting pot. The 12th precinct never changes. Oh, Kelly, how are things? Mocking a laban. How you doing, fish? Staying healthy? I'm every bit as good a shape as I was yesterday. <laughs> Boni Diaz, Chano. Jose Feliciano. Oh, pretty good, thanks. <laughs> hey, 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 Kojo, Kojo, wait a minute. I got a great new Polak joke for you. Wonderful. <laughs> you heard it. Hey, hey, you mana. You better stay out of the sun. You're starting to turn faint. <laughs> Oh, and then you turn the bucket out of think. It is a color mission around here. Where's Wilson and Harris? They got a day off. There's a minstrel show in town. <laughs> what are you doing downtown, Kelly? I thought you was in narcotics. Oh, I'm too sensitive for that kind of filthy work. I'm in internal affairs now. Oh, you're a spy. <laughs> yeah, some people might look at it that way. Stem that's got something to hide, anyhow. Oh, Kelly, what are you doing here? Making friends. How do you like narcotics? You haven't helped him a bit. Kelly's been promoted. Yeah, he's a snooper now. Internal affairs? Can we talk? What about? Graft. Come out of my office. Internal Affairs is very concerned about police officers being paid off, Bonnie. Internal Affairs has always been concerned about police officers being paid off. What's that got to do with us? Oh, some very disturbing information is coming across my desk about cops on the take. Palms up, precincts. You know what I'm talking about. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, no, thanks. How about a punch in the mouth? <laughs> Don't take offense, Bonnie. Gee, you guys are thin-skinned down here. Okay, Kelly, no pussyfooting. You got any accusations, spit it out. I'm not saying anybody's getting rich, Bond. It's just the, uh, the general knick-knacking. Knick-knacking? 
There's not a man in this precinct ever taking a dime from anybody. Hey, hey, take it easy. And I resent the implication. Now, you got any evidence? Get it up, or else get the hell out of here. The division of internal affairs. And don't pull division on me. It wasn't two months ago you were working on my squad. You never did like me, did you? No. <laughs> you're looking for honesty? You found honesty. <laughs> because I'm Irish, right? Because you're always coming up with the wrong answers, like that one. Now you're letting a little authority go to your head. Hey, now, wait a minute, Barney. I always do my job the best I know how, and I'm going to keep on doing it that way, no matter where it takes me, from the smallest precinct right up to the commissioner's office. <laughs> You're not going to find anything around here, Kelly. Oh, clean as a waste of lamp on. No? Not if you're talking about a, a newsboy who, out of the goodness of his heart, throws in an afternoon paper every day. The Division of Internal Affairs yeah, is interested in any gratuity, no matter how big or how small. OK, Kelly, you made your point. But uh, we got a lot of work to do around here, so do me a favor. Get your big, fat butt out of here. <laughs> well, it's nice chewing the fat with you, Bon. I'll be looking in on you. Nice to see you again, fellas. <laughs> Rather be respected than liked any day. Hey, Barney, what the hell's going on? Little witch hunt. Kelly is our local inquisitor. So if any of you guys got anything you don't want internal affairs to know about, uh, you better give it back. <laughs> Are you kidding? I could add up everything I got since I've been a cop on one finger. And you know which finger that is. <laughs> the little one. Hey, Barney, is that creep really insinuating we've been taking payoffs around here? To Kelly, a payoff could be an apple from the fruit stand. He's just trying to make points. You know what they say about a little power corrupting? But, uh, just in case, everybody be careful. Be careful of what? Hey, I never take a vacation. I live in one room. I do my own cooking. I appreciate that. I even wash my own socks. I appreciate that. <laughs> Makes a guy feel like saying, to hell with being sergeant. All right, all right, all right. just take it easy. I got to go catch a dirty phone caller. And if I get anybody, I'm going to give him Kelly's telephone number. <laughs> Everybody, just business as usual. Just go on doing what you've been doing. Don't worry about internal affairs. Don't worry about Kelly, who will be watching us night and day. Here's your late edition. Compliment to the publisher. <laughs> Hello, I'm home. Woo Hello. And I'm in a rotten mood. Oh. Well, I have enough good mood for the both of us. How was your day? <laughs> Swell. Oh, that good, huh? I'll fix you a drink. What for? Well, you usually have a drink when you get home from dinner. Just because I usually have a drink when I get home from dinner does not mean that I have to have a drink when I get home from dinner. What am I, an alcoholic? I don't think so. I do not need a drink. Fine, no drink. Where's the ice? In the oven. <laughs> And the children? Oh, well, David's sleeping over. Rachel's at a film festival. It's part of a theater arts course. Another, another film festival. <laughs> what? That squint. She's going to develop a squint. <laughs> All right, Barney. Do you want to talk about it? You know I never discuss police business at home. I know. You would think. <laughs> you would think. That internal affairs has better things to do with its time, wouldn't it? Yes, I would think so. And what a beauty they picked to do it. Right, <laughs> right. Who? Kelly. Kelly. It's like putting a gun in the hands of a baby. <laughs> what are you looking at? I'm thinking that you don't discuss police business the way you don't drink. <laughs> and as to drink and talk with someone. Oh, well, I'm flattered that you've picked me. Isn't Kelly the one you told me about who wears a shoulder holster over his pajamas? That's the one. Now you know what I'm worried about. I thought you got rid of him. I did. It's the trouble with trying to get rid of garbage. Somebody's always trying to recycle it. <laughs> now he's a 
<laughs> an espionage agent for internal affairs. Well, forget about him. You are going to feel much better after your dinner. Look, we have filet mignon with mushroom caps. Leftovers? Did we have filet mignon last night? We're starting all over. These are brand new steaks. <laughs> Not a little extravagant? Children know we're eating this one? <laughs> it's all in knowing how to shop. I got these steaks for $1.48 a pound. They must be factory seconds. <laughs> the secret is in knowing a butcher who is crazy about the way you walk. It brings special considerations. I've watched you walk. I've never given you any special consideration. <laughs> you don't think I walk for you the way I walk for a butcher? <laughs> You never forget you're the wife of a policeman. I'm not supposed to be obligated to anyone. Well, the mailman doesn't feel that way. <laughs> Every Christmas, we give him a bottle of whiskey. It's the only reason we get our mail once in a while. This isn't Christmas. OK, so we get a little meat all through the year. Would you be happy if the butcher gave us a cow in December? <laughs> this is just the sort of thing Kelly is looking for. He can, he can stir up a lot of trouble for me over a little thing like that. Barney, Mr. D'Amato is a lovely man. He's not doing this because you're a policeman. He's doing this because we are friends, because we are fellow citizens, and because he thinks I'm a lovely hunk of woman. Doesn't matter why he's doing it. The point is, I'm a cop. Now, if I were a tailor, nobody would care, but I am a cop. And a policeman has to be careful about accepting any sort of gratuity. You want me to throw out the steaks? As long as they're here. I could grind them into hamburgers so they won't be traced. Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous. These are perilous times. So until Kelly finds something better to do with this time, please, no more knickknacks. Knickknacks? Just a police expression. Just don't take any favors from anybody, no matter how trivial they may seem. I suppose that applies to uh, free tickets. To the theater? <laughs> to Bermuda. Free tickets to Bermuda? What are you talking about? I'm talking about a little knick-knack from our travel agent. How can he give away a thing like that? Because he gets two free tickets every year, and every year he goes, and this year he is not going. What I don't understand is why is he giving them to us? Barney, he doesn't want anything from you. He knows you're a policeman. He appreciates the fact that you lay your life on the line for him every single day of the year. It's just his way of saying he's sick of Bermuda. Yes. <laughs> we can't accept those tickets. The way things are, it, it, with Kelly just looking for trouble. <laughs> We're going to the mountains. Well, I suppose you're right. But what really annoys me is to see a man who has devoted 20 years of his life to the police department, a man who has never compromised his integrity, a man who has never taken anything from anyone, to see that man suddenly looking over his shoulder and denying himself a lovely opportunity offered by a grateful citizen and a friend is shameful and unjust. I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> It's just my way of saying I'm sick of the mountains. <laughs>
I'll tip over and land on the back of my head. <laughs> Look at this exacted aqueduct. 800 bucks. Why do they make everything so damn difficult? Number three and number four, and I always bet my age. You're not 34. I was when I won my last exacting. <laughs> you mind, why don't you put that damn thing away? What'd I do? All you ever do is bet on the horses, or the football game, or basketball game, or some crap game. You left out highlight. <laughs> it's very fun. If you try busting bookies instead of calling them on the telephone all the time, maybe we wouldn't have a yard bird like Kelly sneaking up our keisters all the time. Nothing to fear but fear itself. <laughs> Go fry a noodle. <laughs> That's beneath you. It's always me that's doing something wrong. What'd you say this for, Wojo? That's out of line, Wojo. Nobody says that about you, Wojo. How come Fish had to climb up nine flights of stairs, Wojo? That was out of line. <laughs> See? It's always somebody beefing about something I done. I wish I was back out in the streets in uniform again. If you're worried about dirty marks in your laundry, maybe Kelly can accommodate you. What's going on? <laughs> what happened? Nothing, Barney. They were discussing Kelly. Good morning. <clears throat> you're late. I interviewed a lot of women last night who got dirty phone calls. I had to take down all the conversations. I got names, I got addresses, I also got excited. <laughs> you want me to type up these reports? Maybe you better let Fish do it. Good. You know, these guys that make dirty phone calls gotta be very lonely people. They spend so much time talking on the telephone, they never get to meet anybody. I wish you'd start writing dirty letters. And the post office could worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> 12 precinct. Yeah, he'll be here. Thanks. Kelly's on his way over. He wanted to make sure you were here. Thanks. Hey, Barney, you think Kelly is just the big mouth, or is he really going to try to make trouble? I think Kelly is just a big mouth who's really going to try to make trouble. <laughs> He's probably after me. Kelly's always had a thing about Orientals being on the police force. He says we screw up the look of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. <laughs> Kelly is after someone in a position of authority. He's looking for somebody who's been doing a little chiseling under the table. Or somebody whose wife has been doing a little chiseling under the table. No, no, that isn't it. He's probably been snooping around into our personnel files and came up with something really big. Like what? Like the fact I cheated on my income tax. When was that? About nine, ten years ago, I went to a police convention in San Francisco, and I deducted all the expenses for Bernice. There's nothing illegal about that. Yes, there is. I didn't take Bernice. <laughs> Did the uh, IRS find out about it? Yeah, they disallowed it, and they took it out the next year. Well, if you're straight with the government, Kelly can't hurt you. I'm not worried about Kelly. I'm worried about Bernice. <laughs> I think Kelly is on to something international. He's after me. What did you do? Me? Hey, I didn't do anything. But my brother-in-law is in New York illegally from Argentina. Where is he? He's hiding in the cellar of a condemned, rat-infested building on the west side. Right across the street from me. <laughs> well, you better do something about it before her immigration finds out of it. Well, I told him, hey, you got to go back to South America, get a visa, then come back to the United States, to New York, take the test, and then become a citizen of the United States. What do you say to that? You don't think it's worth it. <laughs> Hi, Barney. Good morning. I have a confession to make, and I, I think you all should hear it. Maybe we should start lighting candles. It's so serious. <laughs> Three years ago, when I took the test for a detective, third grade, I wrote some answers on my shirt. <laughs> well, they were important answers. 
If Kelly's after my badge, I... I'd rather turn it in than have him put the arm on me. So I'm going down to internal affairs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is some exciting group we got here. <laughs> little fooling around on an exam. Little fooling around in San Francisco. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel sorry for Kelly. I mean, this is a pretty measly bunch of skeletons he found in this closet. All right, gentlemen, we have all purged our souls. Life goes on. Huh? Yamana, that's a police phone, not a racing wire. <laughs> Chano, uh, see if you can convince your brother-in-law there's still some hope for us. Oh. Uh, Wojo, when you take that sergeant exam, wear a clean shirt. <laughs> Fish. Don't waste the warning. <laughs> you know what really annoys me? What, what really gets me is to see basically honest men who have devoted their lives to the police department intimidated and looking over their shoulders. It, it is shameful and unjust. Thank you, Barney. <laughs> What's more, I'm going to tell that to internal affairs. As soon as I come back from Bermuda. <laughs> Patrolman Kelly reporting for duty. For an undercover cop, that's a pretty dumb disguise. <laughs> what are you doing in uniform? It's my payoff, a devotion to the department. Hey, I, I followed those investigations, Barney, like I told you, right up to the top, right into the inner sanctum, the commissioner's office. There it was. Nepotism, favoritism, rake-offs on meat. <laughs> and I thought, sure, I was in line for a gold badge. What did they give me? A blue suit. Here I am, right back at the old one, too. You mean they reassigned you here? Yeah, how about that? Hey, uh, Barn, uh, no hard feelings, huh? Hey, fellas, uh, still friends, huh? <laughs> nice to know they still respect me. Here's a free late edition. Compliments to the publisher. I wasn't making book. Uh, thanks, officer. I'll take over from here. I was just standing around. I swear. What are they busting me for? Convenience. Whose? Mine. I promise I'd lay off the phone. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Yeah, check this out, will you? <laughs> you all right? Yeah, why? You look like you're gonna fall over. It's my new shoes. Hey, if a police officer loses his badge, does he uh, uh, report it to his superior or just wait until somebody turns it in? He reports it to his superior officer. I lost my badge. <laughs> If a guy's been murdered whose name begins with B, you file it under M for murder, B for Bertoli, or H for homicide. What's the name of the guy that killed him? No, we don't know that yet. 
Filing them to you for unsolved. Right. You guys want some cake? Yeah, yeah. sure. Our niece made it. Oh, no, well, I got a fat stomach. Actually, Look, if you'll all have a little patience, we'll have you all out of here and back in business in no time. I hope so. Now, for the formalities. Look, I'm going to read you ladies your rights. <laughs> this isn't going to take very long. <laughs> here, here. Hey, pipe down, will you? You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be held against you <laughs> in a court of law. You have the right to speak to your own attorney. We may be present with you all through the questioning. Now, if you so desire, Woo! and you ain't got the bread for one, we'll give you one. No charge. Hold it! Got a lot of work to do. So stop clowning around, huh? You got it? <laughs> well, we always had it. It just took us a while to figure out what to do with it. Uh, Donna, would you join Detective Yamana? He's the inscrutable devil in the corner there. In whatable? Who gets me? Uh, you got your choice. Me or fish. Oh, well, seeing as how it ain't Friday, I'll take you, Turkey. <laughs> Come on, Rose, let's get some prints of those magic fingers. You must have a hundred sets by now. What are you doing, selling them? This way, madam. Watch your language. Pentanini, you have to sabe. Do, do I have to go with him again? Uh, no, we're desegregated here. He is always speaking on me because I'm Puerto Rican, you know? Well... You see, that's because Chano feels that Puerto Rican ladies are very special. Me too. You know, I make more money than they all do. <laughs> okay, Lily, vente. Ah, avanza. Vente, siéntate. Is that why you came to America? No, I came to be Rita Moreno. But I find out they already had one. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> What's your name? Mary, Queen of Scots. Okay, Mary, what's your real name? Linda Fuller. Address? 542 East 68th Street. Hey, you must do pretty good, huh? That's a very rich neighborhood. I'm a very good dancer. Dancer? <laughs> oh, nothing fancy. Just your average everyday hoofer. Occupation hoofer, H-O-O-K-E-R. I hope you're a good cop, because you're a crummy human being. Rose of Washington Square and Company. On one of their ever popular return engagements. If I had known you ladies were going to be here, I would have dressed for the occasion. Excuse me. Are you the manager? <laughs> I'm Captain Miller. Can I help you? This man has been unnecessarily rude. Is that true, Roger Hoes? I don't think so. I mean, I didn't say anything to her. I wouldn't say to any tramp. <laughs> uh, can I have someone else wait on me? Roger. Because we're policemen does not mean we can't be gentlemen. And I said policemen, not judge, not jury. Yes, sir. Citizens of this city, including alleged lawbreakers, are entitled not only to our protection, but a certain amount of considerational courtesy. Yes, sir. Do your job as quickly and as efficiently as you can and skip the moral observations. OK, Barn. What happened to yes, sir? I'm sorry. It's just there's something about prostitution that really irritates me. I mean, a woman who'd sell her body would do anything. Whoa, Joe. If people didn't want it, it wouldn't exist. Well, I don't want it. You're not enough. 
Linda Fuller. I never heard of this one before. Yeah, no, she's new. There's more of them sneaking in all the time. There's a big turnover in that business. Rose is always complaining. It's tough to get help. Finish her up. And watch it, will you, Roger? Just there's something about this one that really ticks me off, you know? I mean, she's sassy. She's always coming at me with some smart answer. What are you taking it so personally? You're not a client, are you? Are you kidding? Hey, any guy that's got to pay for it, he don't deserve it. Any other source of income? Dividends. <laughs> From the stock market? Once in a while, but mostly doctors. OK, baby, come on. Let's go do our finger exercises. You mean to tell me, Mr. Fuego, that a woman of your obvious charm and background and accent can find something better to do? They don't cut sugar cane in Central Park, you know? <laughs> that is not the proper attitude, Mr. Fuego. Vente. I am talking about pride and self-esteem. And what are you so proud about? You don't do no better than what I do. Mr. Fuego, I came from a very small fishing village in Puerto Rico. Me too. I came here. I worked very hard. I learned to speak English. Me too. And today, I am proud to serve the public and be known as one of New York's finest. Me too. <laughs> Fish, I'm just getting too old for this. Me too. <laughs> Still own and operate the Village of Go-Go Ha Ha Supper Club. <laughs> That's where you've been busting me for the last 20 years. You know, I've paid you guys enough fines to own a third of this joint. Nice having you around. You can get one phone call. Thanks. You're very kind. How long have you been hustling out of Village I Go-Go? I've been a professional dancer for approximately three months. Where are you from? Appleton, Wisconsin. I bet they're real proud of you up there. Oh, hi, Linda Fuller. Any messages for me? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You're supposed to use that call to make bail. How can I make my bail if I don't get my messages? Any previous convictions? Yes. I once thought cleanliness was next to godliness. What's the name of that theater over on 3rd Avenue near the school where they show all those dirty movies? The Dolly Madison. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and I call from the DA's office. They're selling tickets to minors. Who wants to check it out, Fish? No, thanks. If I want nostalgia, I'll listen to Caruso records. <laughs> yeah. uh, Harrison, you mind, you check it out. They're showing a picture called A Man and a Woman. That's not a dirty movie. And another woman. Fuck him, guys. Hey, what's going oh. on, man? This is February. We already busted him for February. That's right. right. You're not allowed to get the last of the body. Just take it easy. Take it easy. What's going on? They're still operating, Barn. What am I supposed to do? Look the other way? Uh, what's he doing? Running for mayor? The police? You ladies know the procedures. Let's get out. Oh. Listen, you, uh, you want us to Xerox the last reports? I mean, uh, you just change the dates or something. If Detective Wojciechowicz took the time to make the bust, you can take the time to book the people. Come on, let's get out. What about the movie? Yeah, I don't want to see the movie from the middle. Let's put Rose's house in order first. Come on. Yeah. OK, Lily Vente, ya tu sabes. Come on, sit down. I'm not saying it's not a cute apartment. It's a lovely apartment, but you've never lived by yourself before. But is it okay with you? Well, you'll have to discuss it with your father. Well, if it's okay with you, it'll be okay with Daddy. Well, if it's okay with Daddy, it's okay with me. Hi, Barney. Hi. Did we catch you at a busy time? No, not particularly. Is that what I think it is out there, or does everyone have his own private secretary now? <laughs> Business as usual. What's up? I saw an incredible apartment today, Dad, and Mom wants me to talk to you about it. Can't I wait till the night? Well, they want to deposit by 6 o'clock. We've already discussed it. I've seen the apartment. It's up to you. I'll wait outside. Sit down. Hi, Nick. Want some coffee, Miss Miller? Oh, thank you, Wojo. How sweet of you. But um, you must never keep a lady waiting. 
That's no lady. That's a cheap prostitute. She's pretty enough to be very expensive. No lady sleeps with a man for money. What brings you up here, Miss Miller? I came to get a check from Barney. <laughs> moving out so important all of a sudden. It's just, I feel like I don't have any privacy. Your mother and I never interfered with your privacy. Privacy isn't something you interfere with. It's either there or it isn't. <laughs> What's so important about privacy all of a sudden? Well, it's just that every once in a while, I feel like I want to be alone. And, uh... Shutting the door to your room is, doesn't work anymore? <laughs> Dad, I'm not talking about being alone. I'm talking about being alone. <laughs> you mean you're not talking about privacy? You're talking about privacy. <laughs> In Wisconsin, W-I-S-C. Previous convictions, none. What did you do? Memorize my sheet? Uh, it's only been a couple of days. I'm flattered. I forget your age. I appreciate that. What year were you born? Early 50s. Would you be more specific? 1947. I'm from uh, Buffalo. That's good news for Albany. That's supposed to be funny? That's called a joke. <laughs> I use it to break the tension. You see, I'm the sort of person, if I don't break the tension, I say filthy words. Or I cry. Or I get nauseous. I told you I was from Buffalo in an effort to make up for the other day. But you don't want to be nice, do you? I just want to be on time. I've got an appointment. <laughs> don't you ever feel cheap? Not really. I feel competitive. <laughs> see, I did it again. Cut it out. Would you rather I threw up on your desk? Hiya, Ma. Uh, hey. I didn't like it when I was called into school on account of you, and I don't like this any better now. Hey. Hi. Are you waiting for your daughter? Oh, yes, I am. How old is she? I'm 17. Ooh, that's young. <laughs> what do we do to him? We just gave him the best of everything, right? Right. Oh, uh, my daughter's not a... Uh, she, she's not working. Uh, she's a student. Mine's a model. <laughs> we watched her like a hawk until she was 21. She's very attractive. She never heard a dirty word. She never saw a naked body. Sex was practically never used in our house. <laughs> I don't know where she developed her interest. Well, most children do have a, a normal curiosity. Boy, did she ask the questions. <laughs> Look at her, things are bad enough. God knows what would have happened if we'd have given her any answers. <laughs> I don't think you can ignore a growing girl's curiosity or her feelings. I told her, your body is your temple. Never give it away. <laughs> Apparently, she took your advice. <laughs> OK, girls, time to go downstairs. We love having you around, but we got lots of things to do. Call Jack can't do it all. See you later. Oh, okay, baby. See you around. Stay cool. Well, if I did, I'd be out of business, honey. Until we meet again, bro. Give my best to Bernice. I wish I could. <laughs> Don't tell me there isn't something else you could do if you really wanted to. I like my work. You could always go back to doing what you're doing. Why don't you try something else? Like what? Like secretaries, they make good money. Or you could be a receptionist. Or you could be good at selling. That's what I've been telling you. <laughs> what happened? 
Well, we had a good talk. We, uh, <clears throat> I told her we had confidence in her judgment, faith in her character, sympathy for her feelings and desires. So it's all set. It's okay with me, <laughs> if it's okay with you. It's almost six o'clock. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm report to them. Say something for tomorrow. The city can't afford you after nine o'clock. You got a lot of time in too. I know. You're gonna get an extra day off this month. I know. Fish. Yeah. How old was your daughter when she first left home? She was almost 30. <laughs> How old was she when she got married? 27. <laughs> Listen, why don't you take tomorrow off? Play around the house. Spend the day with Bernice. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Barney, if you don't need me, I'm going to cut out, huh? You're in a hurry, aren't you? Yeah, well, I, uh, I picked up a minor for possession. After we check everything out, we find out that the cigarettes are regular cigarettes, and she's 23, so I'm taking her out to dinner. <laughs> well, I wish you a good evening. I wish you get your wish. <laughs> you through yet? Yes, Bob. The uh, late tour commander will be on any minute. Hey, Barn. I'd like to get your uh, feelings on a particular subject. Sure. Well, um, how would you feel if, uh, say, your wife, you know, had an affair with another man? You mean while I was still alive? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> before you met her. Oh, well, look. I wasn't the first guy Elizabeth went out with. Well, uh, how many would you say she uh, went out with before you two met? I don't think they were keeping records. <laughs> well, would you say two, three? Maybe. 30, 40? <laughs> what are you trying to ask me, Wojo? Well, um, I'll say, uh, for instance, Mrs. Miller. Uh, had a rotten childhood, you know? And um, with folks that gave her a rough time. She had a tough time in school, and uh, so she uh, left home early, tried to make it on her own, you know? And uh, so she uh, kind of moved to the big city like you do and tried a bunch of jobs like secretary, receptionist, prostitute. How would you feel about that? Well, I'd, I'd weigh the circumstances and I'd uh, check out the facts. You sure you got the facts straight? Yeah. Yeah, secretary, receptionist, prostitution. It's about the size of it. Would you? Well, Joe, you're asking me a question I can't answer. I mean, that's, that's something every man has to decide for himself. Yeah, I suppose so. I didn't have too much time to think about it, you know, because uh, never thought it would ever come up, you know? Yeah, I know. I hope you're satisfied, you clown! What'd I do? I got canned! They threw me out of the club! And it was a damn good job, too. Oh, I mean, I like to dance, but that, I mean, that was in such a good central location, and they had a very fine clientele at that place. Why are you blaming Detective Wojciechowicz? Why well, he knows why he keeps coming in the place. I mean, he was sneaking around, spying on me, hassling me. Rose doesn't want any more trouble on account of me, so she tossed me out. You're gonna be sued, you know. For what, huh? Restraint of trade, you drink! Easy, 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 easy. Oh, you see, he just, he gets me so tense. And when I get tense, I use filthy language. 
Yeah, or else she uh, cries or gets sick. Oh, how would you like to go? All right, all right, all right. Why don't you try a smart answer, huh? It's what you usually do. All right. You, you, you want to hear something funny? You dirty son of a... <laughs> It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. You got a problem, Wojo. She's, she's not a bad kid, Martin. I mean, I've been looking at her for a couple of weeks. Now, that could be harassment. She could be right. You could be liable. Well, at least she's out of that place. Now, that could help, couldn't it? Well, it's a possibility. I mean, it's possible that uh, a rose by any other name could give up being a rose. <laughs> Linda. Linda! Were you addressing me? Um, I better check with the late tour commander. Look, uh, I can't say I'm sorry you got thrown out of that place, you know? But, uh... If I cause you any trouble, I apologize. Don't worry about it. I'll get relocated. Well, uh, when you do, I wish you'd let me know where you are. Why? So you can do the same thing all over again? No, I want to look in on you, call you sometime. What for? I told you I'm interested in what happens to you. So let me know, understand? Is that for the police record? No. It's a personal request. OK, I'll check in. I don't want you to check in. I want to know where I can get in touch with you. I want to maybe call you sometime. I want to maybe take you out to dinner or something. Are you serious? Yeah. You want to see me? Yeah, I'd like to see you. I mean, um, maybe I can help you get straightened out. Then call me sometime and make an appointment like everyone else. 50 bucks in advance. Well, a rose is a rose is a rose, man. Maybe it'll take a little more time. Mm -hmm. Heck with it. People don't change. No, 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 no. That's not entirely true either. <sighs> I must have been stupid thinking I could get interested in a whore. <laughs> My mother must be spinning in her grave. <laughs> Take it easy. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, Barney. Let me 50 bucks a payday, will you? <laughs> Terrible. You don't look so good yourself. Yes, I am destroying myself with pleasure. And it's a pleasure. I've made up my mind. Why not? Didn't you spend the evening with a lady? I told you. I haven't made up my mind yet. Okay. At best, this is a tawdry flick, suffering from inept scripting, cheap jack production values, and lackluster performances. <laughs> Despite these obvious disadvantages, this film has been doing boffo box office. There's a report on that porno flick. DA's office called three times. Before. Your man is typing it up now. Finished? Yep. A man and a woman and another woman is a filthy movie. <laughs> well, what is? That's all? Hey, what happened to all that stuff I was dictating? I thought you were talking on the phone. <laughs> Channel. Yeah. Look at this. 
Uh, Japanese uh, thermometer factory just went out of business. Yeah, how come? Uh, they found traces of uh, swordfish in the mercury. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes, I'm gonna think. <laughs> got four reports, I need typed up. Oh, Wentworth is the best typist in this joint. Where is Wentworth? In the men's room. I've been waiting 20 minutes. I feel like I'm drowning. <laughs> Stuff's in here. 12 precinct. Sergeant Yamana. Hold it, please. Uh, Chano, hmm? it's a telephone company. The supervisor wants to report some obscene phone calls. Oh. Who's the supervisor? <laughs> Miss Bush. Did you talk to her, huh? She asked for you. Oh, why does she always ask for me? You have a way with words, yeah. line two. Yeah, they, this whole business offends me. Hello, Miss Bush. <laughs> yes, this is Sergeant Amenguala speaking. I'm fine, how are you? Good, good, good. Yes, I've been going over the files and... Frankly, Miss Bush, we have enough disgusting material here to write a bestseller. <laughs> What do you mean, for example? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, you see, Miss Bush, no. I know it's official business, but if I was to read you an obscene phone call on the phone, this would be an obscene phone call. <laughs> That's right, Miss Bush. Oh, you have traced one call? I see. Well, the next time you make contact, please get in touch with us right away. Right. Yes, of course. I realize it must be very embarrassing for you. Yes. You have a very nice voice, too, Miss Bush. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, hey. No, 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 no. The voice never matches the face. Yeah, it ain't fair, is it? <laughs> hey, Chano, uh, what's a four letter word for. Hong Tony Kitchen to the Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have to get in there? Only because I'm tidy. <laughs> Four reports on that garage uh, robbery from last week. Uh, what, you want me to file these? No, I'd like you to type them up first, and then file them. Captain Miller, this was not my collar. I'm aware of that. Well, then why do I have to type it up? Because, Wentworth, we make no distinction here between male and female. You're just another cop. Who happens to be a good typist. It also happens, Captain, that I fired expert at the police academy. Good. Then don't type them. Shoot them. <laughs> Hate filling out forms. I thought when you did plain clothes, you did more than fill out forms. Oh, yeah. We do a lot of heroic stuff around here, but if we didn't fill out forms, nobody would ever know about it. I was better off downtown writing parking tickets. At least I was near the windshield where all the action was. You left your lipstick on the sink. Oh, yeah? How'd you know it was mine? None of us is left-handed. <laughs> Well, precinct detective, Sergeant Amenguala speaking. Oh, right, just a minute. Barney! Be there. We got a 1030 in progress in the bank in the East Village. Pick up a car, we'll meet you downstairs. Fish, check out some weapons. Let's go, Nick. Uh, hey, what about me? Uh, stay here, answer the phones, and make sure everything is uh, neat. What's that? It's the fall out of word for Hong Kong, you could see I came here for. Let me go with you. I can be very helpful Don't to you. Don't push, Wentworth. Don't push. There's liable to be shooting out there. Look, these men have worked together for years. They, they, they know they can depend on each other. It's, uh, it's always tough with somebody new. Especially when that somebody is a woman, huh? Being a woman has nothing to do with it. It's a matter of confidence. Look, we'll get to know you, you'll get to know us. Don't be so sensitive, Wentworth. Everybody thinks you're a lovely cop. <laughs> what time do you want dinner?
kidding. May I help you? Oh, uh, no, thank you. I'm a regular here. I'm Elizabeth Miller. I'm Barney's wife. Oh, uh, he's not in. How do you do? I'm Detective Janice Wentworth. Oh, you're new. Oh, yeah. This is my fourth day. Oh, congratulations. Welcome to the old one, too. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. I have a lot of work. Excuse me? How's it going? Oh, coming up on 93 words a minute. If people knew the detective work was 90% paperwork, they'd never watch television. <laughs> I guess not. Well, I'm very glad to see that Captain Miller is married. I didn't think he liked women. I beg your pardon. Oh, I mean, I think he likes women in all the old familiar places. The kitchen, the parlor, the bedroom, you know what I mean? Not really. I think it's safe to say that Captain Miller likes women almost anywhere he finds them. Except on the police force. Did he say that? No. He didn't have to. I've been uh, typing and filing and filing and typing and just sitting around waiting to do something useful. And the first 10.30 that comes in, I get uh, pushed aside and told to mind the store. 10.30? That's an armed robbery in progress? That's right. Is that where Barney went? That's right. And Yamana and Amanguel went as a team, and I'm supposed to go as a team with Fish, but Captain Miller went instead. Boy, I really wish he hadn't done that. So do I. Well, see, you're a woman. You understand what it is to be a second-class citizen. <laughs> How long have they been gone? Oh, Mrs. Miller, don't worry. No, no. They've, these men have been working together for years. They've, they have a lot of confidence in each other. I'm sure that they just stopped off for a sandwich. You have no idea how hungry you could get after a shootout. <laughs> it's the thrill of being alive. Hi, honey. Uh, Nick, can you check this back in for me? Yeah, sure. Well, how'd it go? Oh, fine. I heard the reports over the dispatcher. There was some shooting, huh? Uh, a little bit, nothing serious. Anybody get hit? Uh, just a suspect, but he's gonna be all right. Any messages? Excuse me? Any messages? Uh, yes, yes, sir. There uh, was a call from your wife, and uh, a Miss Bush from the phone company wants you to call her back. Oh. Sounds serious? Yeah, I think so. She was breathing heavy. What are you doing around here? Oh, fine. I uh, answered all the phones, filled out all the forms. I even washed the coffee cups. <laughs> Dinner ready? Oh, I didn't think you heard that. What's the matter, Bernice? Why do you have to listen to the police calls all the time? Why didn't you watch television and iron like a normal woman? <laughs> Nothing happened. Of course there was some shooting. Some guy tried to hold up a bank. Now, you know we don't allow a thing like that. Yes, Miss Bush. Yes, it's nice to hear your voice again, too. Do you have a call trace to him now? What's the address of the phone booth? Okay, I'm on my way right now. Thank you. Me? Well, I've, I've been described as attractive. <laughs> no, Miss Bush, no mustache. <laughs> Would you like me to go with you? Huh? Well, uh, not now, thank you. I didn't think so. Well, maybe next time. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> This is a brochure from our travel agent about crossing on the SS France. It cost about $4,000 one way. Now, uh, these are the three best hotels in Paris. The uh, Plaza Athene, the Bristol, and the Crillon. The villa in the south of France cost $1,250 a week. Then we fly back to Paris and then back to New York. That makes the whole thing cost about $26,000 for six weeks. Can we afford it? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> How about taking me to lunch? You didn't have to go through all of that just to get me to take you to lunch. I thought you would be more excited about the idea if you thought that I'd saved you $26,000. That's very considerate. 
madness and you give up three more trips like that, we're on easy street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why'd you really come down? I just wanted to see you. I spent a very meaningful morning with the other tenants of the building, discussing uh, rent controls and building repairs. And then I bought David a pair of sneakers. And then I read in a newspaper about a policeman getting killed in a bank robbery in Massachusetts. And uh, I just had this overpowering desire <laughs> to have lunch with you. I see. Besides, at the group therapy session for law enforcement wives, they suggested all of this. I thought they dealt with a more direct approach. This week, it's humor, some imaginative joke or bright saying. Instead of sending it to the news and getting $5, you send it to your husband and you get a lunch. You got it. Thank you. Bernice, I got to go. I don't have time to hear a joke. <laughs> I can't take you to lunch. I don't care what the group therapy session said. I already had lunch. <laughs> I'll see you at home tonight. <laughs> of course I still love you. What else have I got to do? <laughs> Goodbye. How long you been married, Fish? I don't know, 25, 35 years. <laughs> I don't think I'll get married. Men have no respect for women. <laughs> That's true. Well, Precinct Wentworth. Really? Where? All right. I got us. We're on our way. Captain Miller! Excuse me, Captain Miller! A guy just checked into the Fremont Hotel, 11th Avenue. Clerk recognized him as an armed robbery suspect from an APB circular. This channel. He's down a call. Money? He's still at the, out at the armory, and uh, Wojohowicz and Harris is still down at Narcotics. Won't be back till the end of the I, week. I know, Edward. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you think you can handle it yourself? I can take a patrolman. No, 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 no uniforms. Uh, I'll go with you myself. Please, Captain Miller. You're going to have to let me go sometime. What do you say, Fish? I'd like to, Bonnie, but it would kill Bernice if she found out I died in the company of another woman. <laughs> Phil, that is just terrible. Okay, Wentworth, come on. <laughs> but I'm driving. <laughs> Patrol Precinct, Sergeant Amana. Yes, sir? A stolen car? Uh, what kind of car, Mr. Rivelli? Studebaker. <laughs> Will you describe the car, please? Black fenders, silver doors, green hood, polka dot uh, seat covers. Monkey fur dashboard. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't stolen. Maybe it ran away. <laughs> Mr. Rivelli, uh, uh, will you hold it a minute? I, I gotta find a pencil. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ackman, if you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say will be held against you. And in your case, with the record you've got at the phone company, everything you say will probably be held against you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a nice little booth here, right for you. OK. If you can't afford an attorney, we'll, su we'll supply one for you at no cost to yourself. Do you understand? I, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> That'll be a nice change for you. <laughs> Call your insurance company. Yeah. Don't mention it. Oh, my God, I ate my eraser. <laughs> that 
Group therapy for uh, law enforcement wives, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, they have a free and open discussion for about an hour, a little lunch, an occasional new hat, uh, an extorted promise of two weeks in Martha's Vineyard next summer. <laughs> My wife and I have never been closer. An occasional phone call wouldn't hurt either. You're absolutely right. <laughs> That, uh... Charles Hackman, the voice of experience. Oh, oh sir, uh, sir, excuse me. Um, I don't mean to be personal, but uh, did I understand you to say over there that your wife is going through therapy? Yeah, you ought to try it yourself. Yeah, I did, I, a couple of weeks ago. Didn't work. Well, I, I just never got to see the doctor. See, when I called the nurse to make the appointment, I, uh... <laughs> No, the court is going to insist on some kind of therapy. Yeah, I suppose so. See, Mr. I Hackman, always... would you step out, please? Step right over there to that desk there. Uh, uh, sir, uh, thank you for your concern. Pleasure talking to you. I don't hear that very often. <laughs> Dagmar, just out of curiosity, but uh, these ladies that you talk to on the telephone, you ever try to make personal contact with them? Well, I have on occasion, yeah, uh -huh. but it's uh, usually kind of disappointing. You know, the voice never matches the face. I know what you mean. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ackman, what's your address? Uh, I live at uh, 675 East Lansing Street. All right, and uh, where do you work? Uh, I work at home. Uh, I write verses, you know, for greeting cards. Oh, really? You mean like... Uh... Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, uh, get well soon. Yeah. It's ironic, isn't it? Maybe you ought to drop yourself a card. <laughs> All right, what's your phone number? Uh, I don't have a phone. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, if I had a phone, then I would never get any work done. <laughs> Call, you'll get your lawyer. You cooperate with us, we cooperate with you. Wentworth? Yeah! <laughs> what the hell's the matter with her? It's her first arrest. We got him. We got him. Without exchanging a shot, Good. Captain Miller, we got him. I got him, Barney. There he is. He's Good. right there. Good job. You want to hear a report? Yes, I'd like to hear a report, but I'd like to hear it from Fish. Uh, your mind, I think Detective Wentworth could use a cup of coffee. I think she could use a keeper. Shut up. <laughs> How do you like it? Traffic control. No, I mean the coffee. Yeah, black. No sugar, no cream. Black. Just black. You got it. Good for you. We drove to the Fremont Hotel. And very slowly, I might add. Right. Then she kept saying, faster, faster. Yeah. We determined that the suspect, Earl Schmidt, was in room 504. Fifth floor, corner room. Right. I took up a position in the hall. And Detective Wentworth... Said, why don't I make out like I'm the maid and you get on the other side of the door? Right, so... Oh, so I knocked on the door and I go, Maid! Maid, would you like your bed? Turn down, so... The door opens and I move in the room and I draw my revolver and I go, Police! Free! Free! The suspect had a gun which he immediately threw out of the window. <laughs> then what happened? Then I dropped to my knees and begged her not to shoot me. <laughs> Here's your coffee. A black, no sugar. Thanks, your honor. You're okay. Well, he's, uh, your collar, Wentworth. I don't suppose you'll, uh, object to filling out this report. No, sir. This one's gonna be a pleasure. <laughs> Get his cuffs off. And put them on her. Oh. <laughs> High as a kite. You're telling me. I took the elevator, she took the stairs. She beat me to the fifth floor. That's, that's a very efficient lady. Combat fever. I've seen it before. Okay, Mr. Hackman, you got one phone call. All right, Schmidt, this is it. Say <laughs> your whole name. Horace Percival Schmidt. I thought your name is Earl. That's what I tell everybody else. I ain't keeping nothing from you. Well, precinct, Sergeant Yamana, hang on. Wentworth, it's yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, Wentworth. What did you say? <laughs> I'm gonna trace this call. OK. 
afternoon. You get some nerve talking to a police officer like that, you know? He has to try this next week, Miss Bush. Right. Right. If the district attorney's office needs you to testify, they will be in touch with you. Oh, yes, I will be there. Well, I'm six foot one, about 170 pounds, brown eyes, black hair, slightly receding hairline. You too, Miss Bush? Uh, Wentworth? Yes, sir. I see my office a minute. Sure, Bruno. Sit down. I'm going out on assignment with your mana this morning, with Chano this afternoon. Hey, you're getting real popular. Just doing my job. You've been transferred, one person. Effective tomorrow. Transferred? Yeah. Why? Some kind of rotation program, initiating more women into the field, giving them a broader variety of experience. Thought I was doing real well here. You did a great job. Well, did you tell them that? Of course I did. It's just another reason why they want to move you around. But that's not fair. The men and I get along good. They have confidence in me. I, I don't want to go somewhere, start all over with a bunch of rookies. I appreciate that. So where are they going to send me? Youth house. Youth house? Oh, youth house? What babysitting? It's temporary. Well, it stinks. I'm not going. You have no choice. You're going to go where they send you like the rest of us. Look, I, I felt the same way when they transferred me here. Just when everything was going so great. When did you say I'm supposed to leave? Tomorrow. Okay, I better go clean out my desk drawer. It was very nice working with you, Captain. See you around. Wentworth, I hope you won't take offense. But I still think you're a lovely cop. Oh! <laughs> Excuse me, I thought this was the powder room. I heard the old one too was in trouble, so I thought I'd come down and give you a hand. Hey, and not a moment too soon. I'll tell you, we stopped typing two weeks ago out of respect for your leaving. You know? That's right. No one's washed a thing around here either. Yeah, there are green things growing out of the coffee cups. <laughs> hey, Wentworth. <laughs> How are you? All right. How's Youth House? Oh, I moved. I moved to a more sophisticated house. I want you to know I have been transferred to Vice. Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I used to love that line of work many years ago. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, Hi, Barney. Uh, oh, look who's here. Oh, it's nice to oh, see oh, you. Nice. Uh, Barney, uh, could I talk to you for just a minute, please? Sure, what's up? Uh, could we discuss it in your office? Go ahead. I just finished another group therapy session. Oh, last week it was humor. What's the approach this week? <laughs> Sex. <clears throat> no calls. <laughs>
Hey, you're all set. You won't have any trouble with that phone anymore. You don't fix toilets, do you? <laughs> Only if there's a phone in it. Could be. You won't flush. <laughs> Are you uh, really a detective? Yeah, why? Never seen a Japanese cop before. You ever been in Tokyo? <laughs> yeah, flew over it during the war. I bet you were an officer. Colonel. <laughs> How'd you know? I know a lot of telephone repairmen. <laughs> Your assignment. That's you ought to fill right, out man. the report. Don't worry about it. You think you're it. fooling them. They know where I am. Come on. Come they on. find you. I'm Please. telling you, you don't know them as well as I do. All this skipping around town is a waste of time. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Why do you come up on people like that? Sorry, I'm Captain Miller. That's the way they got Friedman in a laundromat. Snuck up behind him and pushed him into a dryer. They threw in seven quarters. The coroner said two would have been enough to kill him. I don't want to go like that. Friedman, he was the other accountant for the syndicate. Oh, sweet man. Kept a great set of books, a wife, three kids, a house all paid for. Two laundromats. Right, take it easy. We're not going to let anything happen to you, Mr. Schuster. That's why they moved you here. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. That's what they told me when they took me to the Bronx and to Queens and to Staten Island. Any problems, Tom? No, no problems, Barney. Picked him up at the 51st Precinct uh, near Van Cortland Park. Nice, easy trip. No problems. Nobody saw us. Right. Quiet. I'm not going to make it to the morning. Mr. Schuster, you're going to be okay. Look, the syndicate, they're just another bunch of hoods. They're not supermen. Oh, sure, sure. Then why am I the last witness? Coincidence. Coincidence? Friedman's secretary drowned in the ocean, a beautiful swimmer. Uh, accident. Accident, huh? Steinmetz, Steinmetz, a vice president, took a two-week vacation, and that was a year ago. Maybe he's having a good time. <laughs> What about me? So far, you're okay, right? Oh, sure, because my car was only a warning. What happened? They steal your car? Blew it up in front of my house. You're not going to get hurt, Mr. Schuster. And it was a loner. <laughs> See? <laughs> and on top of having my life threatened, the garage is suing me. What's the matter? You got no insurance? Are you kidding? My mother's going to be a rich lady in a couple of days. I got double indemnity. Then let her pay for the car. <laughs> very funny, very funny. I didn't know Orientals had a sense of humor. Are you kidding? We invented gunpowder. <laughs> Rest assured, Mr. Schuster, we are going to take good care of you. The Crime Commission is very anxious for your testimony, so relax. We're not going to let anything happen to you. 12 precinct, your honor. They don't even know you're here. Mr. Schuster, it's for you. Minutes and they know already. Uh, we don't have a Schuster. We have a Forster and a Brewster, but no Schuster. <laughs> yeah, but don't mention it. Well, what? What? He said, excuse the call. That's it. I'm finished. I'm as good as dead. <laughs> 12th Precinct Detective, Sergeant Manguana speaking. Okay, what's the information? Uh, try not to worry, Mr. Schuster. But they know where I am already. That doesn't change anything. Nobody's going to get at you. In the next 24 hours, you're going to have more cops around you than you got hair on your head. Wonderful. <laughs> Just an expression. I know, I know what you mean, but what about half in the next 24 hours? What then? We're never further away in your nearest phone. <laughs> That's an expression, too, Mr. Schuster. <laughs> would you, Howitz, would you uh, make Mr. Schuster as comfortable as possible? 
Yeah, sure. Right this way. We got it uh, all tidied up for you. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Hey, Barney. How much money we got in petty cash, huh? I don't know. 30, 40 bucks? What do you need? Uh, look, I've been working on a buy for over two months now. It's going down tonight. So what happens? Those sinvergüenza over there in narcotics tell me all their money's allocated. You got enough to do around here. Let them take care of it. Barney, what are you talking about, man? This, you know all the work I put into this all the time? This is my bust, man. Hey, I'm sorry. It's just that I know the people, man. I know the places. It's in my neighborhood, Barney. You know, na narcotics is just going to mess it up. And if they don't mess it up, they're going to take the credit. What do you want me to do about it? Huh? Could you lend me $3,500? Oh, I'll pay you back tomorrow, man. I don't think I have the change. Come on, man, this is clean, man. There's no problem. Get it, Chano. Let narcotics handle it. Hombre, pero que cabe si duro eres? What? I just called you a name in Spanish. What? I don't think you'll care to hear it in English, so never. <laughs> Look who we just picked up for shoplifting. Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> You know something? You simply have no class, Kogan. That's why you're still a private. <laughs> no privates on the police force. Marty, when are you going to learn you can't take things that belong to other people? Why would I take something that belonged to me? Harris, <laughs> would you do the honors? Okay, over here, Marty. I see you've rented my room. <laughs> hey, this is very nice, very nice. You've got good taste, Marty. It was all a mistake. I was just comparison shopping. And you walked out the door with it. Well, I wanted to get another opinion. You know, cab drivers know more about luggage than anyone. What do you need stuff like this for anyway? Well, I'm going away. You ain't kidding. You're going to be gone a long time, too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that's, that's Marty. He's a regular here. You didn't even frisk him. To tell you the truth, I didn't have the nerve. <laughs> It's just the kind of guy they would send up here to kill me. Somebody you don't suspect. Marty. Marty's not going to kill you. Take you to dinner, maybe. <laughs> hey, Fish. Huh? How much money you got in the bank? None of your business. Hey, look, Fish. $950 is all I got in the world, man. I need $2,550 more. I'll give it back to you tomorrow. You got me at a bad time. What happened? I'm poor. Fish, this is just front money, man. I'm going to make a bust. I can't take any chances. I, I got to pay my income tax the next few weeks. Why don't you take it out of the bank now? Get used to being without it, huh? Can hey, anybody order lunch yet? All on right. Not for me, from Grossman. No, I, I didn't. I guess I got to do it myself, huh? All on right. Barney, you calling for sandwiches? Mr. Schuster, we're calling a Grossman's delicatessen for sandwiches. You want something? Are you kidding? I would put anything in my mouth I didn't cook with my own hands first. Burnside, the bag man. Poison in his toothpaste. They found him in the bathroom with a swollen tongue. All right. <laughs> you always order sandwiches from Grossman's, Mr. Schuster. Tell you what. Have an officer go out and pick it up, all right? How about that? I don't want any. All right. I'll take uh, roast beef. Excuse me a moment. Captain, may I see you... Privately. What is that? Who else wants something? Ron? Yeah, short ribs. Short ribs? Fish, what do you want? Hot pastrami on rye and a side order of lemon. <laughs> what can I do for you, Marty? Well, Captain, I have never tried to use my influence with you to get special consideration before, but I would really appreciate it if you would try to do something about this unfortunate incident. What's so special about this one? Well, I'm getting married. Really? Mm -hmm. Who's the lucky person? <laughs> My name is Gertrude Sachs. I'm kidding. Gertrude has, she has marvelous instincts and she possesses those wonderful qualities that my mother had. However, she is older. She's older than you. Older than my mother. How old is she? 74. I see. I knew it. You've lost respect for me because I'm marrying for money. It's none of my business what you do, Marty. As long as it's not against the law. Oh, but, but Barney, it would be very embarrassing if she found out about this. Please, Captain. 
All right, I'll see what I can do. I won't book you, but I'm going to have to hold you. <laughs> Just a police expression. <laughs> Harris, hold that rap sheet on Marty. We're going to negotiate a settlement out of court. Keep him on ice? Yeah, temporarily. Now, Marty, I'm doing a favor for you. I want you to do something for me. Mm -hmm. That's Mr. Schuster in there. Talk to him. Keep his mind off his troubles. What did he do? It's a secret. What do I get if I find out? Kill. <laughs> Barney, look at this. I got $325 from Fish, $524 from Wojo, $475 from Harris, $373 from Yamana, $950 from me, and $40 from Petty Cash. Now, that all adds up to $2,686. $87. <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Don't mention it. Anyway, Barney, all we need is $813 more. How about it, huh? You really want to make this bust? Barney, this guy pushes to kids in schools, man. All right, come on in. I'll give you a check. <laughs> Fantastic, man. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to cash these checks, and I'm going to have your money back by midnight. You better. <laughs> Cheer up, Mr. Schuster. Things could be a lot worse. Yeah, how? Have you ever seen Gertrude Sachs? Here's your sandwiches from Grossman's. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, short ribs. Pastrami. Barney, got your sandwich. Tongue on a ride. There you go. Hey, Marty, you want something? You got anything light? Yeah, I got uh, chicken liver and salami and an onion roll. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schuster, I ordered an order extra sandwich, a uh, corned beef and turkey club. I wouldn't you touch it. They're great sandwiches. Uh, that's what they told Kleinerman, the auditor, uh, and had him stashed in that hotel in Chicago. Scrambled eggs. He was dead before he could put his fork down. <laughs> you know what the police found out? Someone had injected poison into the eggshell with a hypodermic needle. You know how easy it would be to do the same thing with chopped liver, corned beef, bread, mustard? Let your imagination run away with you, Mr. Schuster. Here's your sandwiches from Grossman. Get going. You gotta have your stomach pumped. Come on. Okay. All right. But I feel all right, Barn. Really. You're lucky. Come on. Harris, get a car. Get him over to the hospital. Come on. Let's go. Hospital. What are they gonna do to me over there? Whatever they have to do. Come on. Coker, do me a favor. Get the stuff over to the lab. Get it analyzed. And send the report directly to the hospital. Then call me. Come on. Come on. Go. Yes, sir. Nobody downstairs paid any attention to him. You know, a guy dressed in a cop's uniform in the middle of a change of shift. What did I tell you? You wouldn't listen to me. Shut up, Schuster. How the hell did they find out? What would you call Grossman's from here? Oh, my God. What? There was a telephone repairman here this morning. He, he fixed my phone. I bet he did. I'm sorry, Barney. Amy Schuster was coming here before we did. They had us pretty good. Hi, everybody. Hi. What's new? Who's that? Oh my God, the way things are today, it's liable to be the chief of police. <laughs> what happened? We uh, had a little trouble. What's up? Well, it's nothing important. It's okay. I, uh, it's taxes. I, I need your checks and your and your uh, stubs and your receipts. Right, uh, top drawer my desk. Okay. All right. Let's make the best of a bad situation. Get the dispatcher to call Harris in the car. Have him check Wojo into the hospital under the name Alan Schuster. Right. And put him on a critical list. Right. Let our friends think they got away with something. 
And call downstairs. Tell them nobody comes up here that doesn't belong here. Right. Oh, precinct, your honor. Barney, a uh, manager of some department store wants to talk to you. I can't talk to him now. Barney? <laughs> All right, I'll take it inside. Line two. That was supposed to be me who got poisoned, you know that? Why would anyone want to poison you? Because I know too much. <laughs> My God, if one got killed because they knew too much, I'd have been dead years ago. <laughs> what do you do? I'm getting married. I mean, for a living. I'm getting married. <laughs> I've never been married myself. I don't know. For some reason, girls don't interest me. I guess my head is always too much into business, you know, ambition, making money, being a big shot. Ugh. My mother used to say to me, Alan, Alan, meet a nice girl, meet a nice girl, but I don't know. I always had more fun with the fellas. <laughs> and not that I never met a lot of nice girls. I mean, I actually, I was engaged twice, but every time it came time to make the big step, I thought, maybe I'm making a mistake, you know? I mean, you're liable to make a commitment and then... And then when you least expect it, like a bolt out of the blue, somebody comes around the corner and wham. Wham. Thank you. I, uh, I appreciate it. But he'll appreciate it, too. He's getting married, you know. Yeah, I'll tell him. Thank you. Well, at least Marty's off the hook. Are you allowed to deduct for your shoes? Only those with gum soles. I noticed um, you didn't buy any new bullets last year. I haven't used the old ones yet. Oh, can I deduct them again? Can I depreciate them? Whatever. <laughs> I guess I didn't pick a very good time to come down and discuss taxes. When it comes to discussing taxes, there's no such thing as a good time. Mm. I know it's none of my business, Barney, but I really don't think you have any right to blame yourself for what happened. What I'm trying to do is reconcile myself to the fact that I made an amateur's mistake and I'm supposed to be a professional. What? Harris just called from the hospital, Barney. They're pumping Bojo's stomach. They say he's going to be okay. What about the lab report? The sandwiches were loaded with arsenic. Arsenic? You sure Bojo's all right? They're watching him closely, but so far he's fine. All right, thanks. Have you been seeing another woman? I don't remember. Why? There's a check stub here that says $34 for roses. It's an Italian restaurant. I took the boys to lunch. <laughs> I thought it was something like that. I just didn't want you to think I was taking you for granted. I appreciate that. <laughs> Open it up, Nick. Yeah. Marty, I just spoke to the department store. They're willing to accept the fact that you intended to buy the luggage. So uh, get over there, give them the money, and uh, we'll drop charges. Well, they're really very expensive bags. I don't think I can afford them. What do you think? They go with your shoes. Bon voyage. Thank you. Uh, good luck. I don't suppose we'll be seeing each other again. I probably won't be seeing anybody again. Check in, Marty. I want to know what happens. Yes, Captain. Uh, goodbye. I really enjoyed our brief encounter. Likewise. <laughs> Mr. Schuster, are you a Scorpio? Yeah. Oh, God, I knew it. <laughs> well, I guess I better be getting home. Oh, I won't be. I won't be home for supper. Oh, maybe I'll go out. With whom? Haven't made up my mind yet. When you do, let me know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Good night. Good night. Night, Fish. Good night, Elizabeth. Night, Nick. Yeah, Liz. Fine woman. 
You know, I get a kick seeing her doing little things like that for you all the time. I'll send Bernice over to watch how she does that, if you don't mind. <laughs> Well, he's dead. What? Hojo? No, Schuster. I've got a few rumors leak out. It's right here on the second page. Check it out. You. An unconfirmed rumor from an undisclosed source. Alan Schuster, a state witness scheduled to appear today before the Crime Commission, brought to an East Side Hospital, critical condition, overdose, undisclosed, died this morning at 5.15 a.m. <laughs> ah. Perfect. Uh, sorry to see you go, Mr. Schuster. You say anything nice about me? Uh, not really. Of course, they don't know you like we do. <laughs> How's Wojo? Sick as a dog, but he's going to be okay. Doctor said a dude with an ordinary constitution would have cashed it in. He could eat a desk. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schuster, get ready to travel. Uh, Harris, you and Fish, take him over to City Hall and... Turn him over to the uh, crime commission. Okay, Schuster. No, no handcuffs. You'll ride in the back with me. Try to act as if you're just another one of the detectives in this squad, huh? How do I do that? Oh, just keep looking at me with admiration and respect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing, Barney? Hi, guys. Hey, Chano, did you make the bust? Oh, yeah, sure. Made it nice and easy. Nothing to it. <laughs> Got him with all this stuff? Very good. Where's my money? Uh, I ain't got it. You ain't got it? What do you mean you ain't got it? Quick, someone take my gun away. <laughs> what happened? Barney, I walked into the place, right? Met the contact, gave him the money, he gave me the stuff. I pull out my piece and say, okay, freeze, hands in the air. And all of a sudden from behind me, I hear somebody else say, freeze, hands in the air. <laughs> I mean, you got ripped off? Yeah, by the FBI. FBI? FBI? Yeah, the FBI. You know, the guys with the ties. That... <laughs> They had their own bus going. What am I going to say? They kept the confiscated the money as evidence. Well, okay. for crying out loud, I could have lost some money at the track myself. I didn't need your help. Oh, yeah, well, all right. Take it easy. Take it easy. We'll all get our money back. Yeah. In five or six months. <laughs> Wait till Wojo hears about it. He's not going to be too happy about pulling through. You can give me a note for my tailor, huh? <laughs> Look, if you, uh... If you don't get the money back, uh, I know a way you could take it off your taxes. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Schuster, but no thanks. Uh, 12th Precinct, Captain Miller. Wait, wait, uh, uh, take it easy. I, I can't understand you. Stop crying. Mr. Schuster's not dead. No, he's not. I, he just went over to testify before the commission. Now, will you stop getting hysterical? Is it his mother? It's Marty. Commission has expressed its gratitude to the police commissioner for his cooperation and their satisfaction with the outcome of the hearings. Yeah. Hey, they got them all pretty good, yeah. huh? Hey, what did Schuster get? Uh, it doesn't say, but uh, a cooperative witness, probably one to ten. I have good behavior. He'll probably be out by the end of the fiscal year. <laughs> hey, 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 not so sure about my wallet. <laughs> You're a lucky man. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. The doctor said it was because uh, uh, I had a tolerance for arsenic. From what? Fruits and vegetables. Said there was enough arsenic in there to kill a horse, but not a human being. <laughs>
Semi-annual pistol range qualifications. Rojo, top of the class again. That is a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you mind? You just sneak through. It's my eyes. I'd like to see how good you'd do if you had to shoot through eyelids like mine. <laughs> you made it, Harris. Hey, it's not bad for an intellectual, huh? Chano was third in the group. Yeah, but that's shooting from the hip, man. <laughs> hey, Fish. Yeah? You didn't qualify. It was cold. I wore gloves. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back next week. This time, practice, huh? Practice? It means I have to buy my own bullet. You know how much bullets are today? Well, a big demand. Between the Middle East and television. <laughs> to be able to buy a beautiful bullet for six, seven cents. <laughs> today, 13 cents. And lousy quality. In cheap box. Road prison detective, Sergeant Amenguala speaking. No, no, there's nobody here by that name. No, I'm... S Just a moment, please. Anybody here of a guy named Gardino? Yeah, who wants him? Oh, headquarters personnel. They say he's the first grade assigned here, but I never... Not yet. Any minute now. What, you mean we got a new guy coming in? Yeah, he's transferring from narcotics. Take a message. Oh. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He's, uh, he's doing, but he's not here yet. Okay. Right. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Uh, Barney, can I take a little longer for lunch today? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. You all right? Yeah. Are you a doctor or something? Something like that. Well, we ain't got any hot water again. We ain't got any hot water yet. We've never got any hot water, ever. Neither. Sometimes you make a great deal of sense. Well, Joe, you and Harris, a little paperwork. Hey, who's the new man? His name is Paul Gardino. Spent a couple of years over at narcotics. He's got a good street record. Tough, efficient, but he's a loner. Sounds charming. Hey, hey, why don't you theme him up with me? We could make a very exciting couple. <laughs> we haven't even gotten our plumbing fixed yet. Hey, man, what's that got to do with Gardino? Well, we need a plumber a lot more than we need a new cop. <laughs> Maybe he's handy around the house. Gardino, <laughs> you and yeah, Fish. Man. You can take care of these. All right. Heck, you and me, we gotta get to work on these extract reports. Yeah. Captain Miller? Yeah, I'm Captain Miller. I'm Gardino. <laughs> Welcome to the one, too. <laughs> hey. This is, uh, Chano Amanguao. How you doing? Bill Fish. Hello. Nick Yumana. <laughs> Ron Harris. And Morgan Hulitz. We can make other arrangements to get you some temporary space around here. Um, this is fine. <laughs> It's a coffee table. <laughs> then I'll move over here. Anyway, come on, you can share my desk. I mean, you're gonna have to have some place to put your stuff, right? I don't have any stuff. <laughs> Narcotics travels light, huh? Yeah, light. <laughs> Nick, get him a locker. I don't need a locker. Get him one anyway. <laughs> Gets busy around here, man needs a place to be alone. <laughs> we'll talk later. This way. That's the washroom. That explains the sign. <laughs> okay, Chano. What do you call that? What do you mean? 
I mean that thing that looks like it just crawled out from under a rock. <laughs> well, I don't know. Now, it's got a certain style, you know. Oh, yeah, right. Right off the cover of Harper's Bazaar. Uh, <laughs> what was that thing in his ear, huh? <laughs> That I don't know about. That was an alarm. You pull it if his beard catches on fire. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, guys from narcotics aren't used to conforming. Give them a while. They'll adjust. Okay, Barney. Hey, Fish, we gotta get rolling, man. You gotta see a lady about a burglary on the east side, and also somebody's ripping off drugs at the Gramercy Park Hospital. Which you wanna check out first? Try the hospital. Huh? At least the conversation is more stimulating. <laughs> Oh, Harris, listen, man, I'm expecting a phone call from a young lady. Oh, yeah? What do you, you want me to tell her? I'll tell her yes. <laughs> <laughs> what if more than one young lady calls? Oh, well, in that case, tell the first one yes, and the second one later. <laughs> <laughs> you don't make any calls, you can use my phone. We don't have a wall phone. You better sign in. We, uh, don't got any hot water either, but, uh, I'll boil some if you want to shave. I'm fine. You mean you're gonna stay that way? What way is that? Well, you know, uh, slappy. Does it bother you? No, it's just a matter of personal preference, I guess. You've never been in the service, huh? Yeah, two years in Vietnam. Well, I guess she didn't have time to change since she'd been back. Man, uh, Gladino. Uh, you see, man, it's just that, well, you know, we take pride in the one, too. So we dress clean and we shave every morning, you know? Terrific. <laughs> yes? Ah, oh, Gladino. Have I told you we're, uh, happy to have you with us? No, not yet. We're happy to have you with us. Captain Miller, would you be offended if I put him for transfer? Probably. I'm a very sensitive man. Look, this isn't my bag. I'm no good at busting winos, picking up kids for stealing fruit. Arresting jaywalkers. You know what I mean. I like narcotics. And I like working alone. I know, I read your record. I didn't ask to come here. I don't know why I was transferred. Probably the commissioner's way of saying you're still a member of the New York City Police Department. Not the Green Hornet. You know, I send you to some dull little out-of-the-way precinct. Get you back to basic training. Remind you, you're still part of the team. Is that how you figure it? It's happened to guys. Your team shaves, don't they? That's the nature of a team. The team does the same things for the same reason. If you don't shave, we're all gonna have to grow beards. Are you telling me I have to lose the beard? I'm telling you that while I respect every individual's right to self-expression, you look more like a customer than a cop. And there are rules and regulations. Oh, come on with that jazz. They're just climbing up my back. You said so yourself. So why fight it? They're smarter than that. I don't want to play games. I just want to do my job. And I don't want to shave. What's the matter? You got a skin condition? If necessary. An earring? I'm engaged. You go home, shave, put on a clean shirt, break your engagement, and report back to me. What about my transfer? What the hell for? They'll probably send you to somebody who's not nearly as sweet as I am. Maybe he won't like my dropping in like this. Bernice, don't be silly. Hi, Hi. 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 What's up? Oh, um, Hi. Bernice and I decided that uh, today was our day to beautify the squad room. Oh, so you brought a plant. No, <laughs> I meant us. The plants were an afterthought. Is Fish in the bathroom? No, he's out with Chano. Aren't they going to be back before lunch? It's hard to tell. 
They probably got busy. You know how it is. Why don't you just leave the plan on his desk and then uh, we'll have some lunch and we'll come back later. All right. Which one is it? Oh, never mind. I see his slippers. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's the usual thing. Bernice decided today that Fish doesn't, doesn't love, love her, her anymore. anymore. It's getting that time again. Huh? Oh, yes, isn't it ridiculous? I thought it would be nice if the four of us had lunch together. Why don't the two of them have lunch together? Because you know Fish won't take Bernice anywhere. <laughs> no, man, why should I kid you, Floyd? I'm telling you, man, this is only the second floor. It's just that you are higher than the rest of us. Come on, kid, inside. There you go. That's it. Oh, man, this cell is out of tune. <laughs> hey, Bernice, how are you? Where's Fish? Well, he said he had an appointment. He'll be back soon. Is that marijuana? Yeah, good stuff, too. Look at that. <laughs> hey, Barney, stoned and in possession. You got your whole life ahead of you. What do you need that for? Because I got my whole life ahead of me. <laughs> Did he say where he went? Uh, no, he said he was going shopping or something. That's all. See? Shopping? Mm -hmm. See? Isn't that nice? Why would he be shopping? He doesn't need anything. Very <laughs> nice. Let's go have lunch and then we'll come right back. Good. <laughs> I don't mind waiting. He's liable to drop in any second. But I'm hungry. Have lunch with your husband. That's the way it should be anyway. Take her to lunch. Bernice, I don't have time. Oh, how often I've heard that. <laughs> take her to lunch. Elizabeth, take her to lunch. Bernice, I am going to take you to lunch. Come on. Let's get a sandwich. All right. A small one. Hey, Mother, you're not going to leave me here, are you? I'm not your mother. You sure you ain't got a son? I'm sure. You want to buy one? Don't leave me, Mother. <laughs> That mother left me. 12th Precinct, Will George. What's the address? It's 11. OK, we'll be right there. Barn, we got a call for assistance at the bar over on 11th. Hey, Harris. Come on, we got business. OK, see you later, guys. Uh, yeah. Keep a light burning in the window, huh? <laughs> yes, can I help you? No, thanks. You've done enough already. <laughs> Cardino. You happy now? <laughs> Holy sp Hey, you look just like a kid. Very smart. Now you're catching on. No question about it. The earrings made you look older. <laughs> there really is a big difference. Cute, ain't I? Clean cut, charming. Now when I bust some punk in the street and I say, freeze, I'm a police officer, he's going to look at me and laugh and say, hey, hey, look at that kid. Pull out a piece and blow my keister off. Don't be ridiculous. Freeze! I'm a police officer! <laughs> All right, come on, come on. Just take it easy, Mr. Cooper. Now, you're in enough trouble already. Self-defense! Okay. That yeah. guy took a swing at me first, you know. And so did she. <laughs> What's he doing up here? Lyman Cooper. Drunk, disorderly, assault and battery. Nobody can take a joke no more. <laughs> I'm just sitting at the bar minding my own business, and this blonde comes over to me, and she says, buy your drink, sweetie. And I says to her, how dare you? And then this big guy comes over to me. The guy takes a cut at me, and then the blonde knocks me right off the bar stool. <laughs> It was the other way around. <laughs> Take a seat, Mr. Cooper. Yes. Hey, buy you a drink. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, man, could you roll one of those for me? <laughs> Get your dress. OK, don't move in there. We'll be right over. Right, goodbye. Oh, boy, everybody's going bananas today. Here's a guy shooting at his wife. Closes himself in the bathroom, and he's still got the gun with him. Take Gardino with you. Come on, Gardino, let's go. Uh, you sure you want me to go with him? Can't hang around here waiting for your beard to grow. Come on. <laughs> okay, Mr. Cooper, you're entitled to a phone call. Do you want to talk to somebody? Sure. You know anybody who delivers? <laughs> Does anybody 
Somebody seen fish? It's almost three o'clock. Oh, he's probably still eating. You know how long it takes him to chew. <laughs> Check with dispatch. See if he called in. Okay. <laughs> Lyman Cooper. He was a general in the Civil War by that name. That's why I drink. <laughs> Floyd Spears. I'm a seeker of wisdom and truth. It's just that uh, I like to smoke while I seek. <laughs> you know what you're doing to your brain? You know what you can get from that stuff? Communism. Oh. <laughs> what are you on? Bank America. What do you need? He's not here. Something's happened to him, I know. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bernice. Maybe he called in. You didn't call him, Bernice. Now, Bernice, you're just being foolish. He's probably just out taking care of some business. Besides, the boys would know if anything were wrong, oh, right? Yeah. And you don't see any of them worry. Fish? <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Fish. What are you doing here? I was waiting for you. Everybody's been worried sick about you. <laughs> you didn't check in. <laughs> you smell funny. Perfume. <laughs> and you've got oil all over you. Really? <laughs> Where have you been? I took a massage. <laughs> At the YMCA? At the Garden of Eden. What kind of massage can you get at the Garden of Eden? You kidding? <laughs> we busted that joint three times already. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed? Bernice. Bonnie, may I use your office? Help yourself. Get in there. <laughs> Hey, well, Joe, for crying out loud, man. Well, I thought he was there on official business, wasn't he, Barney? <laughs> Probably. Did you send him there, Barney? I didn't have to. Fisher's initiative. <laughs> Bernice, it's not what you're thinking. How do you know what I'm thinking? I know what you're thinking. And it is not possible for me to do all the things you are thinking. It is not possible for all of us together to do all the things you are thinking. Where did she massage you? On 14th and Lexus. That's not what I mean. I know what you mean. I don't remember. What do you mean you don't remember? I fell asleep on the table. <laughs> so whatever she massaged, it doesn't make a lot of difference, does it? If you wanted a massage, why didn't you ask me? <laughs> Haven't I always told you, you, you rubbed me the wrong way? <laughs> they're doing in there? Very little. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Is everything all right? Couldn't be better. Well, it could always be better, but uh, <laughs> what the hell? He has such a great sense of humor. I'll take it to the door. <laughs> uh, 12 precinct detective all yours. Well, I guess that means I'm going. Goodbye. What time will you be home for dinner? Usual time. 
Unless I decide to drop in at the Garden of Eden. The fish has such a great sense of humor. Okay. Barney, that was Gramercy Park Hospital. They just brought in Chano and Gardino. There's been a shooting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You still got a business to run. Yamana Harris, stay here. We didn't even get to the top of the stairs. When the door flies open, this woman comes running out. This guy's behind her, waving a gun. And she's screaming, hey, he's going to shoot me. He's going to shoot me. I didn't even get a chance to pull out my piece, man. Gardino pushes me out of the way. I fall down the stairs, break my arm, and he takes the bullet instead of me. How bad was he hit? Pretty bad. He took it here in the front and came out the back. Listen, I was two steps below him, man. If he hadn't pushed me, I would have got it right here in the front and would have come out the back here. Is there anything you need? No, thanks. Fish and Doc says I'm fine. I can go home whenever I want. You see that, Wojo? You were wrong about Gardino. Guys can't be right all the time. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hmm? Hey, Gardino, how you, how you feeling? I'm okay. You did a good job. We're all proud of you, Gardino. Uh, when you get out, I'd like to take you out for a beer or something. If you're old enough. <laughs> hey, I owe you one, buddy. Hey, you get some sleep. We'll see you later, huh? Take care of yourself. You need anything? No, thanks. I'll drop by tomorrow. I'll bring you a plant. <laughs> hey, Barney. I still want the transfer back to narcotics. What the hell for? Come on, we've been through that already. Look, you're not the first cop to try to hide behind a reputation or an image. You just did a hell of a job without it. John told us the whole story. What did he tell you? That you pushed him out of the way and took a bullet that could have killed him? I pushed him out of the way because I wanted to get the hell out of there. <laughs> what are you talking about? Talking about confidence, I turned and ran. Turn? Well, you took the bullet right in front. That's where it came out. <laughs> well, results are what's important, not directions. <laughs> sure you don't need anything? Listen, I'll drop by tomorrow. I'll bring you another plant. <laughs> hey, Fish, you made it. Qualified on the uh, pistol range. It was the massage that did it. <laughs> now we can trust you with a gun again. Hey, uh, hot off the press, tour sheets. Oh. And a communique from headquarters. Gardino goes back to narcotics as soon as he gets out of the hospital. Oh, yeah? Well, I tell you, he's going to be glad to hear that, because he's got a four-day growth of beard, and he's polished his earring. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand why the guy needs gimmicks to do his job. I mean, he's good enough without him. What's that around your neck? My marine dog tags. <laughs> but I don't need them. I mean, I just wear them for... luck. <laughs> nah, he wouldn't be caught dead without them. Right. What about that slave bracelet? Hey, man, that's genuine antique. That belonged to my great-grandfather. Everybody needs something. Yeah, listen, I got a good luck tattoo, but you can't see it because it's under my cast. <laughs> I got lucky teeth. How come they're lucky? My dentist died before they were half paid for. <laughs> you know those cute little uh, Japanese dolls that you rub on the belly for luck? Yeah? Yeah. I'm taking one out to dinner tonight. <laughs> See what I mean? Everyone in the room is superstitious. Yeah. Except me. Knock wood.
Okay. Twelve precinct, Ken Miller speaking. Yeah, he's right here. Uh, just a minute. You, what's the matter with your foot? Gout. Rich cooking, huh? No, poor cooking, but rich food. This <laughs> <laughs> for you. On three, somebody named Mona. Again? What does she want from me? I don't know. You pick up the phone, you say, hello, Mona, what do you want from me? I know what she wants from me. She's a groupie. <laughs> Policemen turn around. <laughs> hello, Mona. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> no, 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 I can't come to your apartment. <laughs> No, you can't come to my apartment. I'm married. You're sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to give you some advice. Next time, call Madison 8 5642. That's the fire department. <laughs> She's in heat, didn't she? Uh, they're on the way here. Hey, Barney, uh, you got anything to read? The PAL took all the magazines. Oh, there you are. Auxiliary uniform uh, crime reports from the FBI. Fascinating. It's not going to be the same. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Uh, how are you? Hey, I don't know yet. Last night, a fortune cookie said I was going to have a rotten day. But this morning, my horoscope said it was going to be beautiful. So who are you going to believe? The Chinese baker or the New York Times? 12th Precinct, Captain Miller speaking. Here, go ahead. Channel, 10.30 in progress. Right, Barney. Hamilton Bank, 11th Avenue. Right. Call dispatch. Get a couple of cars. Right. Chinese baker, every time. I'll be out in a minute. Come on, we got a bank robbery. <laughs> Can I help you? you want to lose weight, you could trust the number one trend. Or you could trust the 120 clinical studies behind Weight Watchers, the number one doctor-recommended weight loss program. Start today. Hurry. Offer ends soon. If you could lose size and fat in any part of your body, where would it be? Around my belly, of course. My belly. This. At my 50th birthday here few weeks ago. I want something to help me out here. I want it gone. I cannot believe this. Look at me. It's just an instant miracle. It's so amazing. I, I just, I can't get over it. I'm shrinking in the middle. These are real inches. The fat is disappearing. What you are about to see is a scientific breakthrough that targets the tummy and slims away fat so effectively you may wonder if it's real. But these results are real. They are not paid models, not paid actors, just real people with real results. I am not a paid actress. I am a everyday working mom. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Those are my before pictures. I know, I can't believe it either, but those are my before pictures, and this is me now. These results are, this it's real, this is me. What is this belly fat reducing miracle? The Tummy Tuck Slimming System with the revolutionary Tummy Tuck Belt that instantly erases inches and gradually slims fat away from your belly every time you wear it. Best of all, this fat-burning miracle works even by wearing the belt twice a day for as little as 10 minutes. 
And here's how easy it is. Simply apply the thermal accelerator cream, which contains patented technology. Then put on the belt. Do two minutes of standing abdominal contractions to activate the fat burning. Wear the belt for eight more minutes while you do other things. Then simply take off the belt and the fat reducing continues. Just look as this heat vision photography captures the effect. The belt is taken off. Then watch this time lapse sequence. Three hours later, the fat is still gradually burning away. While you just go about your day, it's so effective, you'll lose belly fat even without changing your lifestyle. I was excited that I wasn't going to have to change my lifestyle, and I thought that would be a real test. After the first week, you could visibly see that it was coming off. That's wonderful to look down, and it's pretty slim and trim. It's flat. I didn't change a single thing about my lifestyle. I did not change my eating habits. Nothing. And if you like to exercise, then adding the tummy tuck turns regular exercise and diet into being almost two times more effective at burning away belly fat. That's right, double the fat loss. And because the tummy tuck jump starts the fat burning reaction, there's no need to wear the belt during your exercise. Simply do the 10 minutes in the morning, then later, exercise whenever you want. Before the tummy tuck belt, I was working out probably four or five days a week and um, literally was seeing no results. But now, my stomach and midsection is so much flatter now. From week to week, you start to see the difference and you start to feel the difference in your clothes. I mean, it worked. It did exactly what they said it would do. The Tummy Tuck belt is made of soft, flexible space-age fiber that pulls your tummy in. So during the initial days, you can either take the belt off after your 10-minute session, or you can wear it under your clothes for an instant slenderizing confidence, while the fat underneath is gradually slimming away. The Tummy Tuck belt gives you that instant slimming look, and that really motivates you to keep going, and pretty soon that instant slimming is a slimming that you don't even need the belt to achieve. And in a joint study, the Tummy Tuck was independently tested by two medical universities using state-of-the-art ultrasound imaging to document the thickness of the belly fat under the skin. Just look at these photos showing a significant reduction in fat. And now you can have your own tummy tuck for just three payments of $19.99, which comes in three flexible fit sizes to fit small tummies to big tummies. But wait, call right now and we'll make one payment for you. So you get the entire kit for just two payments of $19.99. You'll get the Tummy Tuck Belt, the Thermal Accelerator Cream, the Instructional Booklet, and DVD. Plus, the Tummy Tuck is guaranteed, risk-free, or your money back. So test it. Try it for a full 30 days because you will lose size and belly fat. Guaranteed or your money back. This actually did work. It definitely worked. You're getting what you were promised. So call now. Call 1-800-746-4802 or log on to TummyTuckBelt.com. Call now because the Tummy Tuck is guaranteed or your money back. There's only seconds left, so call 1-800-746-4802. That's 1-800-746-4802. Call now. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Say, man, since when is it a crime to come to the defense of a lady and try and protect her honor? Since when? When you push her trick out of a second-story window. <laughs> Don't tell me chivalry ain't dead. Look, baby, you call it whatever you want to, but up here, it's felonious assault. Don't give me details, man. I'm talking about principles. <laughs> Sit down before you fall off your shoes. <laughs> hey, look, chuck me that phone. I got to call my man, man. What's your name? Mayflower. What do we got here? New pimp in the neighborhood. Just what we need. Another social director. <laughs> Welcome back. I read the whole report. It's not the same. Well, precinct, Detective Harris. Uh, yeah, just a minute, Liz. Barney? It's your wife. Hmm. There it is. What's up? What are you doing downstairs? You all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, bring him up. Liz made a citizen's arrest. Who'd she call her? A mugger. Eight years old with a pointed stick. <laughs> Eight years old? He's just out of diapers. Well, he came out armed. Inside. Excuse me. 
Is this homicide? Yes, ma'am. This is, uh, Detective Harris, Detective Yamana, of the Goon Squad. What can we do for us? I'd like to make arrangements to have this boy sent to prison. Come on, lady. I was only jiving. It wasn't my stick anyway. What's your name? Truman Jackson. I'm only seven and a half. He's eight. All right, uh, the facts, please, ma'am. Well, I was riding in an elevator at the house of a friend when this boy got on the elevator and pointed this at me and said, this is a stick-up. Very well put. Then he asked me for all my money. Well, she didn't give me any. Then she took my stick. That's robbery, ain't it? All right, Jackson, all right. Harris, hook him. Okay, come on. Let's go. Do you think I could have a cup of coffee? Hey, brother, let me go. Hey, man, I can't do that. I mean, you broke the law. And it's uh, now my duty to inform you that anything you say can be held against you. You ain't no brother. That, too. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, I hate to see him go to jail. I just, I just couldn't let him go. You let us handle it. What are you going to do? Work him over with a rubber hose? <laughs> Now, seriously, Barney, what are you going We're to do? We're just going to shake him up a little bit. Relax. What's your telephone number? Man, I ain't got no phone. Well, where do your parents live? Man, I ain't got no parents. Well, uh, who do you live with? Grandpa and Grandma. Ah. You want going to prison? Oh, yeah, you got to go to prison. <laughs> well, how long? Well, uh, that's up to the judge. Judge Meany. <laughs> He's known as the hanging judge. Are you driving me? No, man, that's the absolute truth. The last little dude that held a lady up in an elevator got 18 years. And that was from Judge Goody. Do I get him? Oh, no, he's sick. <laughs> Barney, do you think I could uh, speak to him for a few minutes and uh, say goodbye? Uh, 11 to 1, Wednesdays and Sundays. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Warden. Come on, time to lock you up. Don't look back. Okay. Inside. You get one meal a day. And you already missed today. <laughs> Take me far, just dock it here. I gotta get some keys. Well, well, I see you finally got your hands on Mr. Big. <laughs> hey, man, look. The little brother started out on the wrong path, and we're trying to show him the light, so don't blow it, you dig? Any help you can give us will be duly noted on your rap sheet, and the district attorney will be so notified. Do I make myself clear? Say no more and open the door. <laughs> Oh, you one of them tighten up cats. What you do, soul brother? Hold up. Ooh wee! You in the big time. Better get some rest, cause it's a long trip up the river. Man, after a while, it gets to be like a circus. Everybody's standing around, staring. Let me go. Okay. You know. I mean, People inside the bank, people outside the bank. <laughs> Surprised they wasn't selling tickets. There's Fish. Oh, he's coming. He's right behind me. Hi, kid. Hey, somebody shrink? <laughs> How you doing, Ronnie? Okay. Hey, Ronnie. Right. Well, what happened? Well, <laughs> you know, it's a little tight at first, but it's okay. Fine. I mean, just right, Fish? Right. It's touch and go. It's touch and go. Hey, man, did anybody help me out? You seen any felony reports around? I mean, you know, I'm... Hey. Oh, I got a felony report. Man, these people, man. Told you, they just don't understand, man. They, they can't get away with stuff like that, you know? I mean... And they read about it every day in the papers, man. Somebody trying to rob a bank here, somebody trying to rob a bank there. Just don't understand, man. They can't get away with it. Hey, anybody know that... Oh, there it is. Right there, on my calendar. April 14, 1970. What happened? Two armed men. One with a shotgun, one with a handgun. Shot a guard. 
held six people hostage and threatened to kill them if we didn't let them go. It had gone on all day if someone didn't get inside. Apparently someone did. Chano. Killed both of them. Oh, yeah. Anybody want, you want a cup of coffee, Barney? Huh? Jeez, I don't remember it being this cold in April. Anybody remember it being this cold in April before? Huh? Mm. Oh, man, that is definitely not Puerto Rican coffee. Who made this? I did. Tastes like it was made yesterday. What time yesterday? You would think after all this time, somebody would be able to make a decent cup of coffee. <laughs> Sorry. No, it, nobody cleans up the table anyway. What's going on, man? I was. All right, I'm on it. I just got the words on headquarters. That stick up at the Hamilton bag. Huh? Those two hoodlums were killed in the attempt. Is that about it? It's unavoidable. Heavily armed, they had hostages. China had no choice. No, huh? Yeah. Oh, Chano, so you went in. You did what you had to do, huh? Don't worry, I know how you feel. Let you take the rest of the afternoon off, go see a moving picture. Uh, huh? Yeah, sure. That's what I used to do. I got a Radio City music call, see a good movie. Good stage show, you know, them rockettes with the no, legs. I'm, Inspector, maybe I just better stick around here working. Huh? Well, some of the guys like to do it that way, yeah. You know, they like to get... Right back in there again before they freeze up. Oh, you do whatever you feel's right. Whatever works for you. <laughs> Some of them rock guys have been there. Uh, 30, 40 years, the music hall? <laughs> Not the same ones, of course. They play some from time to time. The legs is the legs that goes out of place. <laughs> Well, John, I want to tell you, you did a hell of a swell job. And so that lady was going to make you feel any better, you'll probably get a medal for it. I'm going to put you up myself, personally. Medal? <laughs> Hear that, Barney? Left here this morning, I was nobody. Two shots later, I'm going to get a medal. You hear that, guys? <laughs> well, there's no sense my staying around here, eh? May as well... Go to Radio City Music Hall, maybe pick up a couple of rockets, a bottle of champagne, and celebrate. A medal, huh? How do you like that? Look closely at history in the making. This $50 Buffalo gold piece was the purest gold coin ever struck by the U.S. government. It was the first U.S. coin ever struck using .9999, that's four nines, pure 24-karat gold. Its design was based on the famous Buffalo nickel of 1913 to 38. Wildly popular with investors and collectors, the U.S. government had to stop production because of a shortage of specially made gold blanks. It's no wonder the price of that edition has gone through the roof. Now you can reserve your own tribute to the $50 gold buffalo clad in 14 milligrams of 24 karat gold. National Collectors Mint's private non-monetary minting recreates James Earl Frazier's American buffalo against a mirror-like background on one side, and his iconic Native American Indian head stands out in stunning relief on the other. The final issue price was to be set at $50 per proof. But during our special release, this 24-karat gold-clad masterpiece can be yours for only $9.95. With gold prices up almost 500% since 2002, price can only be guaranteed for seven days. Each new 2023 $50 Gold Buffalo Tribute Proof order comes individually numbered with a certificate of authenticity verifying that each piece is clad in 14 milligrams of 24 karat gold, is proof struck, and is based on the famous design of James Earl Frazier's Buffalo Nickel. There is a strict limit of five proofs per caller. Distribution will take place in registration number order. 
earliest reservations receive the lowest registration numbers, so you must hurry. Avoid disappointment and future regret. Call now. To order the 2023 $50 Gold Buffalo Tribute Proof, call 1-800-479-4741. That's 1-800-479-4741. There is a strict limit of five proofs per caller, so don't delay. Call 1-800-479-4741. That's 1-800-479-4741. This mango hint water tastes just like mango. How can water taste just like fruit? How can our feet look just like our hands? How can our feet look just like our hands? For a limited time, new customers get 45% off on our top flavors at drinkhint.com, including our new exclusive online flavor, coconut. Just $1 per bottle. And if you order now, we'll ship it right to your door for free. Did he just say there's coconut hint? Hint. Water with a touch of true fruit flavor. Hi, I'm Sharon, and I lost 52 pounds on Golo. I realized I needed to make a change when I looked in the mirror and did not recognize myself. I saw the Golo commercial, and I liked how they weren't actors. They just seemed like people that were just happy with themselves and had true results. Since being on Golo, I truly feel like I'm back to the best me I can be. Try Golo. It works for me, and I'm real. Hey, Bar. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I wonder if I could have a couple hours off. Take off. What for? Oh, uh, just uh, I got uh, things. Leave him alone. Let him take care of it by himself. Hey, what about the kid? Oh yeah. Did you call his grandparents? Yeah, I told him we'd bring him home after a little while. Think he's had enough? I think he's had enough. Well, oh, how are you sports doing? I'm hungry. You're hungry? Yeah, I told him we'd eat as soon as we get to Sing Sing. <laughs> oh, Sing Sing. Should have thought of that before you held up the pretty lady. You can't believe nothing that pretty lady says. I think she's a fibber. <laughs> how do you know that? She lives in our neighborhood, and she's always telling lies about kids who got sticks. I think she's a witch. Isn't that right, little witch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she lies just like everybody else. We're the only ones that tell the truth. That's why we're going to Sing Sing. <laughs> Please, man, I didn't to get out this mess. Ooh, well, let's see now. You could, uh... Throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. That pretty lady ain't no witch. Yeah? And it's my stick. And? I'm never gonna do nothing like that again. Okay. See, Judge Meany said that if you confessed, I could let you go. No stuff? No stuff. Harris, <laughs> turn him loose. Bye, right. Lou Richard. Sorry, I can't have dinner with you. <laughs> That's all right, Truman. Don't worry about it. Just remember what I told you. You know, use your brains. And a stick is, is uncool. uncool. <laughs> and that German, Officer Harris here gonna take you home. No handcuffs. Goodbye, everybody. Come on, little brother. Let me give you a ride. You gonna tell my grandpa what happened? I got to. <laughs> Man, you ain't no brother. <laughs> Did you ever have to do what uh, Chano did today? Close, but... Uh... Me neither. I was always secure knowing that I couldn't hit the side of a barn. <laughs> Unless you had to. You know, I went to a cop show last night and saw him kill a couple dozen guys. Didn't bother him at all. That's because they didn't have to be there when the lights went up.
Did it. Barney. Oh. Oh, wait, wait, don't, don't beat it. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, man. You all right? Yeah, yeah, come in, come in. Hey, I wouldn't stand out there too long. This is a rough neighborhood. <laughs> hey, can I get you beer? Thanks. Yeah. Oh, good. One beer coming up. Place looks the same. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I got a girl who comes in once a year, you know. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> Around. Hey, come on, sit down, man. I, any, you know, here. John, I want you to tell me how you feel about what happened today. Oh, I didn't feel too good. Could have gone the other way. I wouldn't feel good about that either, now. <laughs> well, then, doesn't seem to, be, to have been much choice. Yeah. We could have let him have the money. Doesn't work that no, way. No, I know. They should have robbed another bank and another precinct. <laughs> What'd you do today? I went to a movie. Yeah. yeah. You feel any better? Yeah. yeah. What'd you see? Dirty Harry. Oh. <laughs> Hey, can I get you something to eat? No, buddy? no, no. Liz is probably holding dinner. Oh, yeah. but don't let me stop you. Hey. Hey, Barney. Uh, thanks for coming over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen. You want to take a couple of days off? You know, you do that. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah. Did you ever wonder why the sperm whale, which is the, large, the largest mammal on the face of the earth, has a throat about that size? Yeah, you know, I always did one. Why is that? Because <laughs> that's the way it is. There ain't anything you can do about it. get out of here and right into my shower new dial with hydroclean complex and vitamin e cleanses deep but is gentle on skin dial up your day let's do this is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do personal loans through net credit help you borrow up to ten thousand dollars so check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score you may even be able to build your credit history as you repay net credit a more personal personal loan this is annie she started a school for dogs but had trouble getting the loan she needed to grow. SmartBizLoans.com found them a bank which got them an SBA loan with a great rate. It was fast, it was easy, they were super nice, and I got the loan. Apply today at SmartBizLoans.com. Nick, uh, how do we fix the supplementary follow-up reports? In the file on arrest. Or F you. <laughs> never mind, never mind. All right. Hi, Marty. Hey, my name, Fresh. Hello, Joe. Was I'm in Guad? Took a couple of days off. You know. Oh, good, good, good. I'm just as glad he's not here anyway, Barney. Well, what's the matter? I'm in Guad isn't going to get the Medal of Valor for April. They're, they're giving it to somebody else. It's going to tear them apart. That's what it's done to me, Barney. <laughs> they're going to give it to some cop in another division for for pulling two kids out of a burning building <laughs> and a dog. They said I didn't want to make a big deal about a cop killing two hoodlums. I know how you feel. Thanks, Barney. <laughs> now, but look, look, tell her. Tell Amiguel not to feel too bad about it. You know, if he's lucky, he'll probably get another shot at it. <laughs> hey, pardon the pun, huh? <laughs> yeah, they like 
the old days, Barney. Huh? The old days, the old racket squad used to have respect for cops in those days. Me and Foster, Kleiner and Brown. <laughs> Anybody want to get on a candy store, get a Charlotte Russe? <laughs> See you around. <laughs> this is funny, ain't it? What's that? There's no weather report in the paper. Maybe we ain't gonna have any. Hey, you all right? I'm getting dizzy going up and down stairs all morning. The only toilet that works in this building is on the first floor. How many times you been up and down? Let me see, I had uh, 